never, you know, did any of the sins when, so, when, you, when, when you were born again? Before I answer that question, man's experience is irrelevant to what the Bible says. Yeah, okay. Because we all have a flesh that can be tempted. That doesn't mean we're all going to sin, and it doesn't mean we're all sinners. Now, there have been times after being born again that I chose to heed to a temptation and therefore sin. That doesn't mean that the Bible's not true. Oh, the Bible's true, yeah. Right, so when I did that, yes, I became a sinner again. But this is what the Bible says. If you sin, not when you sin, if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the man Christ Jesus. sin, God is not happy with you. Amen, brother. He's not pleased with you if you're living in sin, willful rebellion against God, breaking the commands of God. God is calling you to repentance. The scripture makes it clear that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't deceive yourself. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. In our day and age, people call good evil an evil good. They think as they live an unrighteous life that God is pleased with them. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. If you're living an unrighteous life, God is not pleased with you. If you're looking at pornography, God is not pleased with you. If you're getting drunk, or high, God is not pleased with your life. Sir, I love being a homosexual. Hey, me too, high five! Well, you're not gonna love it in hell. I love being. You're not gonna love being a homosexual in hell. Um, I'm or you'll burn life. forever for your sin. God is calling you to repentance. You become born again of the Holy Spirit. He can change your life. He can transform your life to be what you ought to be not what you are currently. You think it's all fun and games to live in sin and receive the pleasure from it, but there'll be no pleasure in hell for the sinner, no pleasure in eternity for the sinner. Instead, just pain and torment forever and ever, though, where the worm does not die and the fire is never put out. There isn't a fire hydrant. There isn't a sprinkler system. There isn't a fire department big enough and strong enough to put out the flames of hell. God is calling you to repentance today. In fact, God commands okay. all men everywhere to repent. Awesome. Because right. it's coming a day in which God will judge the world in righteousness. Hey, guys, how are y'all? How you doing? I'm Great well. Sir, I'm the VP for Student Affairs. Okay. okay. Thanks for being here. Do you have a reservation? Don't need one, sir. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Public campus, pay for by taxpayer dollars. Correct. I can be here. But we have a reservation requirement for the public to use public forum address. And we do. We provide you that. But through the reservation process, it helps manage time, place, and manner. Well, you're welcome to provide me that if you want to, sir. Yeah, but I'm just passing you. through. That's OK. So I, I don't want you to cool my free speech. No, we're not. Okay, so we, if, you, if you want to, wanna if you, you want to set it up, that's great. But right now, I'm going to keep on preaching. Okay. But, here but I'm, okay. I'm willing. I'm willing to receive that from you. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll be, you want to come into the office? We'll sit you down in front of the computer. You can make a reservation to be here. Not right now, I don't, sir. I want to preach right now. Okay. Yeah. Huh. All I right. want to exercise my freedom of religion and freedom of speech on a public campus. Okay. All right. Well, not a problem then. We'll, we'll get some folks over here to help uh, address that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate, Thank you. appreciate it. Appreciate it. But don't put off, don't delay getting right with God. The Bible says your life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Your life is going to vanish away. You may think you're invincible as an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old. You may think you have all the time in the world that your whole life is ahead of you, or your whole life could be just today. Your whole life could be another week, another year. And what will happen to you then? If you die in your sin, what will happen to you then when you reject the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the cross for you and go your own way and walk in your own wisdom, walk in the pleasure of this world, the Bible says, do not love the world or the things in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. For the scripture says, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? Even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. King David said, oh Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days? that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly every man his best day is but a vapor. Young people, you need to answer to God. Get right with God while you still can. Jesus said you must be born again. You're searching in all the wrong places. You're living according to the ideas, like whatever feels good, do it. But a lot of times what feels good in this day and age, in this world, will not feel good in eternity. Your sex outside of marriage, your drunkenness, your getting high, your mockery of the gospel will not profit you in eternity, will not profit you on judgment day. Get right with God. You won't be doing that in hell, young man. In hell, young man, there'll be no pleasure for you. There'll be no pleasure for you in hell. You're making a fool out of yourself. You make a fool out of yourself for your sin, and you are a fool in your sin. You're a fool in your sin. It's foolish to continue in sin. It's foolish to die in your sin and go to hell. Is your pleasure you get from your, the little bit of pleasure you get from your sin worth going to hell forever for it? The Bible says mockers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust. Forget it, that judgment day is coming. Yes, judgment day is coming. You live your life in your sin as if you have no one to answer to. If you have no standard in which God will judge you, that's wrong. And you can deceive yourself and sear your conscience and corrupt your conscience and ignore the word of God through all your entertainment, all your distractions, all your supposed social media, watching videos virally on TikTok and Snapchat and YouTube and Twitter. If that's your life, you're deceiving yourself. That is not reality. Reality is that Christ died for you on the cross. 
Amen. Reality is that you're going to give an account for your sin. Amen. Reality is your sin will cost you your soul, your eternity. <laughs> That's reality. But the pleasure you get from your sin will only last for a season. And then that season, your life will come to an end. And then you'll give an account for your sin. And if you end up in hell, there'll be no mocking, no scoffing, no laughter. There'll be no pleasure for you in hell. The party has been canceled because of the fire. You won't be hanging out with your friends, getting drunk, getting high, fornicating in hell. Hell is a place of judgment. Hell is God's jail cell. That's where he sends rebel. That's where he sends sinner. Repent while you still can. Young man, if you end up in hell, this kind of nonsense will be replayed for you. You have to give an account of your life. That's right, so there's laughing up now. There'll be no laughing in hell. Laugh it up now, because there'll be no laughing in hell. Just judgment and wrath in hell. You're so original. You're so original. Two lesbians kissing in front of preachers. So original. You're so creative, so imaginative. That two lesbians kiss in front of preachers. You're going to hell, period. How That's played out, man. That's played out. You don't want to go there. You think hell is a mockery. You think hell is something to laugh at. Hell is not something to laugh at. Hell is something that's to be sober over. Hell is something to weep over your sin. <laughs> and the Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. <coughs> Cleanse your head, you sinner. Amen and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. Humble yourself because God opposes the proud. God is against the proud. But God gives grace to the humble. Unless you humble yourself like a little child and have childlike faith, Jesus Christ said, you'll by no means enter into his kingdom. You have to humble yourself, have a childlike oh, faith. Please open their hearts. What's that? I'm going to be in God's kingdom, yes. No, this science has hate God's hate word on it. The truth sounds like hate to those that hate the truth. Was that a judgment? Don't, don't be a hypocrite. The Bible never says thou shalt not judge. Don't be a hypocrite. If you judge me for judging you, you are a hypocrite by definition. You are a hypocrite by definition. God has no problem with judging. Yeah, listen, listen to the pacifier while you go to hell. Judgment. God is the most judgmental being in the universe. If you have a problem with judging, you don't like God, that's for sure. So I'm simply here to represent God as his ambassador, calling to you to be reconciled to God, calling to you to repent. So, so you say, ma'am, that's not what the Bible says. You don't speak for God. I'm a Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, born again. You have your own God that you formed in your own mind, ma'am. Kind of Not according to the Bible. So says you. I don't think you know anything I'm going to listen to the Bible, not you. If you think I'm going to listen to the Bible, not you. In your sin, I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit and not you. In your sin, you serve an idol and not the Jesus of the Bible. You're sitting right now. The Jesus of the Bible. Says who, you? Who are you? 
The GS of the Bible will send sinners to hell. Excuse me? The GS of the Bible. I can't hear you. You got you got a muzzle on your mouth. I can't hear you. No, I'm talking to the girl behind you. I can't hear you with that muzzle on your mouth. I can't hear you. He's how is he racist? Muslim isn't a race, it's a religion. That's not a race. Are you ignorant? Islam is a religion, not a race. You go to college? You go to college and you don't know Islam is a religion? Hey, I could talk to you. I could talk to you. Come on. Come on. He is Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning hey, the hey, my man, my man, you are free to talk. Don't listen to her, man. Absolutely. You're free to talk. You don't have to listen to her, man. You're free to talk. She, she's angry. She's already angry, I can tell. Ma'am, you don't know nothing about us. Stop lying on us. This young man is more mature than you. He wants to ask questions. He wants to ask questions. See, you're the angry one. He's not angry. Well, the, you're not protecting anybody. These students are adults, and they, nobody's going to put hands on us, and we're not going to put hands on anybody. Why are you assuming that, ma'am? This, this young man's more mature than you. He just wants to ask questions. So you say, you don't even know me. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. Well, I'm about to get to know him. Well, young man, you can ask all the questions you want. Fight through all the stereotypes, man. You don't have to listen to none of that. You just, no, you can come over here. You can come over here. Okay, well, I'm going to stand right here. If you want to ask questions, go ahead. Bro, I, I, go, I go into a lot of places, man. I feel comfortable everywhere with Jesus. With Jesus. What's your question? I'm good right here, bro. What's your question? I don't think you are, bro. I don't think you are. You talk to me. I'm right here. What's your, what's your game? What's your game? What's your we don't play games. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. Okay, let me rephrase that. What's your motive? Motive? What are y'all talking about? About Jesus Christ and about okay. sin and how people can get out of sin. Okay, so what is, what is your definition of sin? The biblical definition of sin. What, no, I ask, what is your definition of sin? The biblical definition. I need you to express that. Which is the transgression of God's law. So if, God, if Jesus says do not have sex outside of marriage and you have sex outside of marriage, you've committed a sin against God. Okay. That's a disobedience to God's law. Okay, have you ever had sex outside of marriage? Long time ago. Long time ago. And, and, and you know what happened? Mm -hmm. The Lord saved me. I repented of my sin. I got born again and Jesus washed me clean of all my sin. He gave me the Holy Spirit so I wouldn't do it anymore. Alright, so I got a question. Who, 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 wrote, who, wrote these, who wrote Who wrote your textbook? I, I know who wrote the textbook. Oh, okay, so you believe that stuff? No, I don't. Oh, you don't. So why are you in school? Why am I in school? Yeah. I'm here to, I'm here to, I have an oath to, to people that I love. An oath to people. And and as you're learning in school, who's writing those textbooks? I know. I, it don't, it's not about me being in school. You feel me? I didn't say it was. I'm just asking you. I'm, I'm actually reversing the logic you're bringing to the Bible. I'm not trying to, you see, you're trying to play mind games. No, 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 no. I'm trying to make you answer for your own logic. I'm trying to, I'm trying to ask you a couple questions. So you okay. The Bible, the Bible says about the Bible itself. For, first of all, just calm down a few steps. Yeah. Because you're running your mouth a lot. See, this is where we're going to be at. Don't do that. Because I'm an intelligent person, you're an intelligent person. Absolutely. All right, so so as two intelligent people, let's not assume things about each other. Okay, so, but you assume you brought up something that had nothing to do with it. What? 
what I bring up. Yeah, well, you you asked me who wrote the Bible, and you know men wrote the Bible, so I flipped it on you and said, so who wrote your textbooks, men? So why'd you ask the question? Because I'm asking you a question, sir. Don't ask me this. Why are you asking a question? What's your motive? What's your game? My motive is to see what, if you really believe what you believe. Absolutely. I live it every day. Okay. So, every day. All right, so again, I'm going to ask you, since you answered my question, mm -hmm. okay, so a man wrote the Bible, okay? Who used to say that certain things are seen and was not seen? Okay, so how do you know that the Bible was written by men? You just said that. Okay, okay. Are you going to listen to the answer or are you going to keep talking? Are you going to listen to the answer? Still talking. Still talking, man. I'll give you the answer. All right, so the Bible testifies of itself that it was holy men of God, divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit that wrote it. So if, if somebody writes a book, right, do you give glory to the computer that printed the paper? Or do you give glory to the author that wrote the, the book? Okay, but again, I'm asking you a question. Just answer it. No, yeah, right. No, you okay, so, so men are like a computer, are like a, a pen, right? And God is the one who's writing the book. And so the Holy Spirit inspired men to write these words in the Bible. How do you know that's true? How do you know that's not true? I'll tell you how to know it's true. So in Peter, Peter writes a letter, mm -hmm. and he says that we have a more sure word of prophecy. And so if you study the prophecies in the Old Testament, right? I'm not asking if your family is religious. I'm trying to tell you how the Bible is divinely inspired. I'm just expressing you that I, I have not Okay, so, so when you study the prophets, right? I'm going to give you just one prophecy. There's hundreds, okay. all right? So Isaiah prophesied that King Cyrus, by name, over 100 years before he was even born, mm -hmm. King Cyrus, mm -hmm would come and de defeat Babylon, and the Jews would come back into the land. Hun over 100 years before he was born, and it's written down, and we, we know that when it was written because of when Isaiah lived, they found, they found things in Israel that prove that these scriptures are that old, and Isaiah did live, and he wrote it at that time. Year, over 100 years before King Cyrus ever even came and, just, and, and sacked Babylon and gave the decree for the Jews to go back into the land. It was prophesied by Isaiah the prophet by name, the timing, Jeremiah gives the timing 70 years and they'll come back into the land. That's one prophecy that was spoken way ahead of time that was divinely fulfilled, historically fulfilled. That's just two, actually two. Jeremiah gives the timing, Isaiah gives who, who, what king is going to be in power to do it by name before he was even born. Okay, that's just two prophecies, bro. I can go on and on about the prophecies, and not to mention, not to mention, not to mention about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Prophecies, you're good, yeah. Not to mention about the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus, where he would be born, that he'd be born of a virgin, you know, that he would be pierced, and many other things, even, even down to how much silver would be sold for him to be betrayed. And all these prophecies were historically fulfilled, you see. And so there's no way a man could have wrote those things because they're all too specific and too, too much, uh, the timing was fulfilled in perfect detail that a man could have never predicted that. And we're not talking about some like Nostradamus type stuff where you s speak a general thing and oh, that could be it, you know, but these are specific prophecies. And that's not it, bro. That's not the only reason why you can tell that the Bible is divinely inspired. When he talks about the heart of man, when he talks about salvation. Well, that's that's the heart of these students, bro. Don't listen to them. It's all right. We deal with this at every college we go to. I'm a mass communication major, so it's just the outside noise. Yeah, I'm used to it myself. You good? You'll learn as you get older how to block all that out and talk anyway. You know what I'm saying? Again, so, so that's how you know that the Bible is divinely inspired by God through men. And look at the Bible. It was written by over 40 authors over a couple thousand years. Okay, so Genesis, the first five books written by Moses. And then Moses, he was the one who delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. God used him to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. I need to see that. I need to see Okay. Well, I mean, we can't, I can't teach a three-hour lecture no, right no, now. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to guide you down. Look, I, I'll give you this, bro. If you really want to know if the Bible 
is historically accurate, there's a lot of places I can send you to find that out. No, but again, we're going back to who wrote it. Okay, we're not. Well, okay, he's just one. No, I'm saying. Profits. The information, the information, the information can be cool. The information is not that. But we got to figure out who wrote it. Because at the end of the day, who wrote it has their own ulterior motive. You can say that it's divinely. You can say that it's divinely. But that's just your suspicion. No, 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 no. no. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. That is a suspicion because we're not yeah. going to get it to suspicion because people know what they're doing. That's your suspicion. People, that's not, now, that's not I'll, I'll give you how that's not true. I'll give you one example okay. of how that's not true. So in Israel, in Israel during that time, during the, say let's say when the Gospels were written, right? When the Gospels were written. The testimony of a woman was not as strong as a testimony of a man. That's the way the culture was. And so, hold on, I'm trying to give you some context. The culture at the time, you didn't listen to the testimony of a woman over a man at that culture. In the Gospels, it gives many testimonies of women who saw Jesus, who, who was raised from the dead. So if these apostles who are writing this Bible wanted to get this message across and manipulate things, they would have never used the testimony of a woman, first of all. And there's other clues like that where you can tell they didn't have any alternative motives. And so they were, they were, actually, they were actually persecuted and killed on this message, that a man died and rose from the dead. I mean, dude, there, that, that's a pretty foolish message in the world if you're trying to manipulate somebody to believe something and make them follow you to control them. Now, granted, I'll give you this. There have been men and women throughout history that have used the Bible to twist it and put some kind of control and dominance over another people. Okay, that's happened. But that doesn't mean what they did is biblical. When you look at what Jesus said, you can tell that they weren't really followers of Christ. Uh, do you know that the, the Bible is copyrighted, has been copyrighted by the, by the, British, by the British government? For no, man, government. that's no. That's not true. You're talking about the King James Bible? It's not copyrighted. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about even, even before, their versions have been before the King James Bible. The King James version. Of the Bible. King James is a good version. I said that there has been versions before them that have been, that have been copyrighted. Okay. It's it saying that. So that's why I'm going back to who exactly written. That's why I go back to ulterior motive. You feel me? So. Well, what, what, what do you think was the ulterior motive? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to get you on. That's what I'm trying to, that's why I'm asking you. I've already researched this stuff. Out. I mean, you're not hey, going to... But you haven't, but you haven't, but you haven't, but you haven't answered the question. I already did. No, you, you just got to go search it out now. No, I haven't. So if you say you, if you say you research it, you can tell me, right? I'm pointing you in the right direction. No, See, I, look, you can, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not a horse. I'm not trying to <laughs> No, I'm just saying it's an analogy. I'm, 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 I know it's an analogy. You're not a horse. It's an analogy. No, I understand that. I'm not saying it. See, you're trying to... I'm not trying to do anything, bro. I understand what you're trying to say, but you still have an answer. Okay, if you know the answer, why can't you just tell me? I just told you. No, you haven't. Okay, I just gave you a lot of stuff to go on. Okay, let's let me ask you this. Where are you gonna go when you die? Where am I gonna go? Yeah. My soul, my soul is eternal. I live on. You live on where? I live on wherever I live on. You and how do you know that? Because I know that within me, God is within oh, me. Oh, you. Yeah, you so what do you base that on? What do you base that on? Yeah. Because God said that the body is my temple. The, the temple Where did he say that at? It's in the Bible. Oh, so now we go back to the Bible. Yeah, I'm not trying to. Okay, so, so are, you, are you born again? No, I'm not. We're not. You are you? Me, we're not, no, no, we're going to get to this. You're going to get to your soul now. No, we're, we're trying to take this somewhere that I'm not trying to take it. Sir. Well, that's all right. I'm still going to take it there because you need to hear it. Because I need, no, I'm not trying to hear nothing you're saying. I'm trying to ask you a question. Well, then why are we talking if you're not trying to hear nothing I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking about. You're in communications. If you don't want to hear what someone's saying, then, you know, the conversation could be over, man. No, I'm saying, I'm trying to, you're saying stuff that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. You feel me? You're okay, gonna, what does that matter? We're trying to find out what God's talking about. That's really what's important here. No, because you're, I'm, again, I go back to where you're trying to see. If you what does the Bible say? The Bible said, you asked me what the Bible said. Yeah. The Bible said that God repent of your sin. Okay, that depends though. That depends. Right, so, so. Jesus said, if you love me and keep my commandments, I'll pray the Father and he'll send you a comforter. Then God will live in you because you've repented of your sins and you're born again by Jesus Christ. That's what it talks about in the Bible. Then God, then your body becomes the temple of God. But right now it's the temple of devils if you're a sinner. I didn't say you're a sinner. I said if you're a sinner. Yeah. So are you walking in sin? Are you walking? Nope. Because of Jesus. I mean, look, look at the look what the Word of God does. We we encounter this at every college, and people people get helped and people get saved. Jesus was crucified, bro. Of course, it's provocative. Eleven of the apostles were killed, bro. 
They were killed for this message. Yes. Not a message of a dead man rising from the grave. Not as many as Christians, bro. Christianity is the most persecuted faith in the world, bro. Have you looked into it? Have you looked into it? What are you basing that on? Okay, so what are the numbers? You know how many Christians are killed worldwide every year and have been throughout history? Have you ever read like Fox's Book of Martyrs, Martyr's Mirror, those books where where the where the saints are persecuted? Have you ever read the book of Revelation? You ever, you ever read the book of Revelation where the saints are going to be persecuted? You're not going anywhere. I'm trying to I'm trying to put it in a direction. Okay. That sounds good. So you are you saying I'm not open minded? Yes. Okay, so let me ask you a question. The gutters in the street, are they open? They're open and they let everything in it. I'm not open minded. No. Now when I found the truth, man. Now when I found the truth. It's not my truth, it's God's truth. You haven't accused me of any lie. You haven't proven I'm in a lie. Because you're not even trying to listen to what I'm trying to say. You're not saying anything, bro. I've told you where you could go to prove the Bible's true. I've told you where to go to prove the Bible's true, bro. I answered all your questions, man. Okay, what question have I not answered? What question have I not answered? Okay. I already answered it. I already answered your question. Take care, man. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Can I just ask an honest question? Mm -hmm. Is this the best way you can see Jesus? Because well, I, I, am a man, I, I will confess, I am a man of faith. But I firmly believe that this is not the right way. Do you read the Bible? I do. Okay, so in the Bible, what do you see? I see how they, How do they communicate the message in the Bible? They go out and proclaim it. But it's okay, so word. so that's what we're doing. And God, but mm -hmm. I, I just need, I'm not trying to disrespect you guys, but I won't just... Oh, I don't care up. if you disrespect me or not. I'm, I'm, I'm secure in my face, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to love you anyway. I'm a very firm believer in Christ. Okay. But he calls us to love one another. Okay, is that not what we're doing? Well, it's obviously... Hold on, hold on. It's obviously... Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You believe the Bible. I do believe that. Okay, so do you believe that sinners will go to hell? I do not, be I do not believe that sinners... Well, then you don't believe the Bible, because that's what Jesus preached. Jesus also preaches that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory okay. of God. Okay, well, no hold on. Perfect. Have sinned, past tense. That doesn't mean you continue in sin. In fact, the whole New Testament talks about getting out of sin and walking in holiness. And I so, that. so, so if you're still a sinner, then you're not born again, according to the Word of God. Everyone is born into sin. No, they're not. That's not. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's what some pastor told you. That's not what the Bible teaches, though. The Bible teach. So you're telling me since babies are born sinners, that they go to hell too? No. Why not? Sin There's no sinner in hell in, in heaven. God, you could live your entire life a sinner, be, on, be lying on the floor, about you, to die. Are you going to take that chance, though? I am not going to take that okay. chance. I'm, a fir I'm firmly rooted in Christ. I believe and that God is real. I believe that God okay. is going to come back. If you believe, He's going to wipe every tear away from my eyes. He only for the saints. Only for those that are pure in Christ. No one is pure. We are pure in Christ. The Bible says, hold on. The Bible says, the Bible says that we are pure. It never calls the saints sinners anywhere in the New Testament. Never once. It calls them saints. It calls them holy. It calls them pure, clean. You have been made clean through the washing of the water, right? We've been made pure. We don't, I don't have any sin anymore, right? What did Jesus tell the adulterous woman? He said, go and sin no more. If Jesus told us to go and sin no more, then what's our problem, man? What's our problem? It's a matter of... Of will. Of will. Everyone That's right. needs to come together. We cannot go out and throw Jesus. Jesus is not boastful. Jesus is not proud. This is not boasting. This is not proud. This is proclaiming the truth because we love these people. And if you love them, you would tell them too. But they're not loving it, and that's not getting... It doesn't matter. You, they crucified Jesus. Does that mean he wasn't loving? They killed 11 of the apostles. Does that mean they weren't loving? It doesn't matter how they react. What matters is, is you preach the truth. This is not the way to do it. Okay, so says you, bro. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says to proclaim it on the housetops. If you read in Titus, 
It talks about the preaching of the word. You know what preaching? It's a herald, somebody who cries out and says, turn from your sin and repent. You know what Jesus said? He said, the world hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. And that's what we do. Come to Jesus. He loves you, but you got to turn from your sin. But I just wish that there was a better way. I just wish that there was a way we don't go out and throw God in, peop in, people's, in people's faces because he wants us. You know what Jesus said? He said, if you're ashamed of my name in this wicked generation, I will be ashamed of you in the presence of my father. Then go, then go preach the gospel. Yeah. Dude, don't go to Old Testament law. Don't go to Old Testament law. I eat beef hot dogs anyway. Okay. Have you ever ate a sausage? I still eat pork. I still eat shrimp. I wear mixed fibers. Okay. Those laws? Okay. That's the oldest so, argument in the book, bro. So this is what I'm saying. Wait a minute. You got to cut. That's the oldest argument in the book, bro. In mind, right? And you see how it went from one point of view to another point of view. No, that's not true. It's it's an old covenant. You understand? So that covenant was for who? Israel. Right. Okay. That covenant was for Israel. We are in a new covenant. Right. Christ came, he died, he fulfilled the whole law of Moses. Right. So now we have the faith of Abraham. Abraham Abraham was not under the law of Moses. He wasn't even circumcised and he believed God according to Hebrews and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And so the Gentile believers, they have the law written on their hearts. So we're not bound according to Romans 14. If you read Ro Romans 14, Paul deals with this. Let no, ma no, let no man judge you in meats or holy days. So we're not bound by the Levitical, uh, the Levitical priesthood laws of, of, of diet. This is kind of the point that I was trying to reach here. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But it's, sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Well, what do you mean, how you say it? So what I mean is, is that don't you think you would have got a lot more positive outcome? It doesn't matter what the outcome is. Feedback, it doesn't right? matter. Well, it does kind of no, it doesn't. Do you know why there's so many false converts in America that aren't really Christians? Mm -hmm. Because of that mentality right there. Okay. They, make, they make the gospel man-centered. Uh -huh. And they sh sugarcoat the gospel. They create all these groups in their churches, and they bring a bunch of people in, and they don't even get born again because they haven't told them the truth, okay? Jesus, the apostles, they went out and told the truth that, man, you're in sin, you're in sin, and you got to repent of your sin and be born again and come to Jesus. That's the love of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love does not rejoice in iniquity, it rejoices in the truth. But this is the world's love. The world's love is acceptance, right? Oh, just accept me for who I am. But like, that's not what God's like. God does not accept everybody for who they are. So you feel as though... No, I don't feel it. The Bible says this. Okay, well then let yeah. me ask you this then. Do you think that babies that don't get baptized go to hell? Dude, that's a false doctrine. Babies are not born sinners. Nowhere in the Bible does it say they're born sinners. Anywhere. They're born innocent. Okay. So They don't need that, to get baptized. So, okay. That's, so, that's actually an Augustine heresy. No, no, no. What yeah. I mean is, with that same mentality, yeah. right? All right? You see how it's kind of... They're put into this situation, you know, they die, of course, they don't get punished, everything. Don't you think, you know, maybe you guys should offer a way for people to kind of be better informed themselves? Because nobody wants to. Well, 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 you're not saying that your message is wrong. What I'm saying is that. But we've seen that. We, we've seen that. That's you. You got You can't judge everybody like that. I mean, I can't judge I mean, everybody. We both I mean, have I YouTube can, channels. I can view. We both have YouTube channels, okay, and okay. we get people emailing us all the time. Thank you for preaching the word of God, blah, blah, blah. I, in fact, I'll give you one testimony. When we preach at Kennesaw State, we preach oh, at Kennesaw you State. Are you okay? Are you, <laughs> you see how they treat the students around here, man? Are you okay? This is just a safe space. Are you okay? I get out of here. Dude. See, look at him. He's the, he, he's, the one, he's the one that's out here messing around, man. What's wrong with you, man? You're offending my students. Oh, okay. I think you're offended, man. I think you're offended. Are, are, they, are they puppy dogs that you have to protect them? All I'm doing is making sure Justin is okay. He's okay, man. I got him, bro. I got him. He's a student of this institution. I got him.
got him, bro. You've offended his friends. That's all right. He's making sure that he's all right. Well, you're offending us by assuming that we're attacking everybody. So. That's fine because y'all are. Well, it's not an assumption. Yeah. All right, stop judging. Stop judging. Stop judging. Stop judging. That's okay. I'm gonna walk away. All right, take care, man. I'm glad you're good. Thank you for That's such nonsense, man. He's actually mature, man. I want to. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually mature, unlike some of the people around here. Yeah. yeah, so 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 it doesn't matter like what the reaction is. Jesus was crucified, bro. The apostles, 11 of them were killed. They went and told the truth. God is not going to accept everybody into the kingdom of heaven. That's true. Unless you repent of your sin and be born again. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus preached. That's what the apostles preached. Unfortunately, in America, there's a fake... There's a, that is what Jesus preached. A homosexual will not enter the kingdom of God. I'll show you. I'll show you where Jesus defined marriage. No, no, no. You ready? But Jesus didn't write the Bible. Polygamy in Bible? Is it polygamy in the Bible? You see what I'm saying? Like, Jesus didn't write the Bible. Did not? Not Excuse one me? Not one no. Are you going to listen, ma'am? That's why there's so many people. Okay. That's why there's so many people. But you're accusing the Bible. You're accusing the Bible. No, what you're saying is this is what Jesus wrote. Does that mean that God approved that? Did God approve that? No. no. So, so in Matthew 19, this is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. What he say? Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, uh -huh. binary, only male and only female? I know that he said that. Yes, I do. How, you were there? I don't have to be there. Was the person who wrote You can actually trace this back to the one who wrote it. Okay. In history. Have you ever researched the historicity? I have a degree in religious studies. Well, you, it didn't do you no good. It didn't do you no good. Didn't do you no good. Didn't do you no good. Who's your Bible teacher? Tell me that. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Not, not a theological degree. Didn't do you no good. Okay, so... So it says Jesus created them male and female. Okay. There's a lot of religious zealots out there, but they don't know Jesus. The fair okay, so says the Pharisee. And said, for th so you say, so you say, all I listen to is God. And he said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, a female, and they shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, they are one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let not man put asunder. So Jesus, from the beginning, that was his will. One man and one woman in marriage forever. Just because there's polygamy in the Bible doesn't mean that God approved that. It doesn't mean that. There's no law that says go get multiple wives. But here's the thing that I'm saying. Not God, not Jesus, none of them are publicists. That's why it's 50 different versions of the Bible. But That's why each one has a different point of view. Are, are you going to take that to heaven with you or hell? I'm take it to yeah. Heaven. Is that going to be your excuse on judgment day when you stand before God and say, well, well, God, you know, I didn't believe you because there were 50 different versions of the Bible. When you didn't do, excuse me, sir? What did you say? Oh, okay. Uh, where you where you could have done the research that's and you right, could have searched right. it out. I can do the research. That's right. And so it's do it. Me to choose to do that. That's right. It's not on you to come and force me to do. I'm not forcing you. Do, do you have? Are you chained to the floor? No, no, but you yeah. See what I'm, it's like I'm not a, forcing you. We're having a conversation here. I don't know. What, I can't think of the word. Look, the typical student is very sensitive nowadays. Okay, they can't handle an adult conversation when it rubs against what they believe. Right? I mean, we see it at every college campus. Then you got people like these people coming around saying, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" All that stuff, because because they're too sensitive. They can't take them coming against what they. Most college students I've come across don't even know why they believe what they believe. They don't know why. They 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 suffer from. Hold on. They suffer from. I'm sorry. They suffer from groupthink. So whatever their culture believes or whatever their friends believes, they believe because, oh, well, because I'm this way, I believe it. I don't even know why I believe it, but I just believe it because my friends believe it. And I get that. I see that a lot, bro. And that's dangerous. It is dangerous. It's it dangerous. dangerous. But you know what's something else that's dangerous? Is that when you come to a campus, when you come to a public place or whatever else, you already know how these people are, right? Because you've already been through this before. But that's why we have love, man. Okay, correct. We, we come here and we endure this for their sake. You understand how everybody is, right? Your goal is not to be confrontational or anything like that. It's to inform and spread the message, correct? Right? In God's way, yeah. In God's way. That's right. With all that in mind, if you're following under the example of Jesus, 
show me where in the Bible it said that God went, Jesus went to places, right? With a sign that basically said to everybody, you're going to hell. Or did he preach to everybody <laughs> he the preached. love of God okay. and how they could come to God themselves and be forgiven? And be Jesus loved. preached against sin. He says in the book of John, I testify of the world, they hate me because I testify of them that their works are evil. Okay, Jesus was... I didn't say you were doing anything evil. I'm telling you what Jesus said. You're, right. you're saying, well, where did you... Okay, back then they didn't have signs, bro. They had papyrus they were writing on. So we have technology now that we use. We use YouTube. We use what we have now, okay? It doesn't mean it's not biblical as long as the message is biblical, right? Right. And so, so... Jesus proclaimed the gospel. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, bro, it's really hard. Even in Matthew 7, he said, there's going to be many that come to me saying, Lord, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, we've done all these works in your name. I started a church, Lord, I prophesied in your name. He said, he said, and I will profess unto them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Mm. And what was, what was the key there? Workers of iniquity. Mm. And so just because you call yourself a Christian or a believer in Jesus, doesn't mean that you're truly a believer in Jesus. Mm. It says, ye shall know them by their fruit. Mm. You shall know them by their fruit. And this is not what turns people away from God. Sin turns people away from God. Let me give you the testimony of a Muslim, right? An ex-Muslim. This is what an ex-Muslim said, right? that came from the Middle East. When he came to America, what threw him off was that there were all these Christians claiming to be Christian, but they walked in their sin against what the Bible says. That actually turned him away from Christianity because all these Christians in America are saying they're Christian, but they're walking like hypocrites. They're not walking like Jesus told them to walk. They're not full of the Holy Spirit. They're not truly born again. So do you feel like this is okay with y'all doing? I go by the Word of God, and the Word of God says to preach the gospel. So did the Word of God say walk around with signs? I just dealt with that with him, bro. I didn't hear what you said. They didn't have signs back then. So obviously they weren't, they weren't, hey bro, calm down. No need to get violent, okay? I'm not getting violent. Well then back up. Just don't get violent. It's not us, bro. It's your man right there. Deal with him. We're, we're, bro, go, go chill out, man. Goodness gracious. Yeah, man, I've been, I've been, I've been spit on. I've been knocked out for this fade, bro. I've been spit on, knocked out. I've had pee thrown on me. Our brothers have poop thrown on them. I mean, just because we preach against sin and how you can get saved and believe in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. See, here's the love of God. Here's the love of God, that Christ died on a cross, shed his blood for your sin, that if you would repent, that means turn away from your sin and believe on him, you will be saved. You shall be saved. That's love. But when they have a gospel that omits repentance, doesn't talk about sin, then all you're doing is creating a lot of false converts, mm -hmm. hugging them to hell. That's all you're doing. Because that's not love. The world has a wrong concept of love, bro. The world has a wrong concept of love. If you're a homosexual and I know that you're in sin as a homosexual, I'm not gonna hug you and tell you you're okay with God, God will accept you. That would mean I hate, I actually hate you. That would mean I actually hate you, you know? I gotta tell them the truth in love, you know? And this isn't the only way to share the gospel, bro. This is preaching. Me and you are talking one-on-one. -on -one. I have, I have well, people. see how this is a little more appropriate? No, it's not. Either one is okay, according to the Bible. You see? This is casting a net. I feel as though you kind of got to use discretion a little bit wiser here. Like, no, bro. You, know you just mean? preach the gospel. That's all you do. Oh, man. It, their reaction does not mean... If I wanted him to do something for me, I wouldn't walk But I don't want him like, to do something for me. I want him to hear the truth. You see? And it's up to the Holy... The message, I just... just as you tell it. As you just tell it, bro. You don't sugarcoat it. Okay. You just tell it. I mean, it's not sugarcoating. It's just there's one version and then there's another version. And Bro, your version, version it's not my version. version. Look, right? I'll give you another scripture. No, no, no. This is what I mean. I'll give you another scripture. Hold for me. Hold for me. Go ahead. Go ahead. In your version, what I'm saying is, is that you've come across you're being completely 100% honest and truthful, and you're just gonna bash everybody with. We're not bashing face. everybody. We're not and bashing well, anybody. Are. Look, are look way. at this. No, Versus this is this man. is what's bashing. That young man that you fussed at earlier today. He's a pastor. Did you know that? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if he calls himself a pastor, bro. But I mean that 
that don't there, you think what's his there are a lot of wolves in bro, his birth. you have to go to the word of god mm -hmm. to find out who is truly walking with christ not on your own opinion bro but again this is look read this in jude will, look man. so what's your basis of truth then what's my basis yeah. of truth is that i go to bed at night and i pray I've been to Afghanistan and I prayed. Okay. I've been back I've been to this Israel. country and I prayed. Okay. And everything else. And that. So what's your? God what do you stand on, and bro? The way that God speaks to me in my own is the way that He speaks to me. On your own. All right. Right. So, so, so I'm supposed to trust your God no, that speaks you to, to you. I don't want you to trust me what? at all. Yeah. We're gonna relocate on the other side of this building. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rotate, bro. Okay. We're gonna rotate. Yeah. It's good talking to you, bro. Sorry, I got cut short. All right. How you doing, officer? Good. Quite a crowd. We're not leaving, we're just rotating. You guys can come follow us if you want. God bless you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Man. And they, they say we're this the is actually. One. Plus, there's a bigger area here. I'm really surprised they want us to be right here. I am too. Move to China if you don't like it, man. You're the one whining about us being here, not us. But you yell at children, do you feel big up there? You're a, a child? Muscle? You're a child? Actually, I wasn't up here until they, they just moved us up here. <laughs> you ain't a Christian, man. You're, You're not a Christian, bro. You're not a Christian. You're a wicked hypocrite. Yeah? Huh? I don't, I mean, my wife doesn't think so, uh, you know, so. so. I feel so sorry for her. She's not. God calls all men <laughs> everywhere to repent. Do y'all think that this is the way to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? God's way, of course. Doesn't matter what we think. Do you think it's, way. Do you think it's the best way it's to God's spread way. the gospel? It's God's way. So God would do this. God's way. God did do this. Even God in flesh. Jesus Christ. God don't give a fuck about you. Show me in the Bible. God had prostitutes on his side. Thieves no, the Bible side. never says that. No. No. They repented. That's not true. They repented. I do. I do. The Bible says the Bible without a haircut. Like you it doesn't say that. You're making that up. It doesn't say that in the Bible. Pull it up. Eat, eating. Well, you're the one making the assertion. Pull it up. Huh? It's up to you, bro. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah, Okay. Start again when you're done. Yeah, go ahead, bro. You, you sure? Okay. God who formed you in your mother's womb. God who gave you life and breath. God who gave you food and water. And he gave you your soul living inside of you, an eternal soul. This same God, instead of giving him Instead of giving him his due glory, you have turned his glory into shame by disobeying God and turning to your sin instead. Instead of turning to God, you turn to your sin. And because you didn't give God the glory, one day you're going to perish in your sin if you don't repent. But God gave a care about you, and he sent his only begotten son into the world to die for sinners. What are you going to do with the blood of Jesus? He took his time to come down and suffer on a cross, and what do you do with that? You live your own life in sin, and you do those things that God hates. Instead of receiving the love of God, you turn God into an acceptor of sin. Woe to you! One day you're going to wake up in hell and wish you listened to the preacher preach God's word. Don't you understand? 
Don't you understand that God is calling you to repentance so that you don't have to die and suffer in hell? Don't you understand that it's God's love that sends out his preachers to tell you the truth? Don't you understand there were tears shed for you? each other as I have loved you. And I'll hold it up. Look. What's love? You don't know what love is, according to the Bible. You don't know what love is. Let me read to you what love is right here. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love, love, love rejoices in the truth and does not rejoice in iniquity. I don't hate you. It doesn't matter. It's not going to get you into the kingdom of God. It's not going to get you into the kingdom of God because you hate me. You hate me, and I'm one of God's children. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall also reap. If you sow into your sin, homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of God. Those that have sex before marriage will not enter the kingdom of God. Thieves will not enter the kingdom of God. Liars, those that hate, will not enter the kingdom of God. It is the love of God that calls you to repentance. Folks, don't you understand? Don't you understand that it's God's will to turn you from sin? The Bible says in James, it says that God resists the proud. God resists the proud. You're proud in your homosexuality? God resists him. God resists the proud. You see? And this man calls himself a Christian while he lies to you and tells you you're okay and that you're going to go to heaven. He's lying to you. No, there are no homosexuals in the kingdom of God. You must repent, turn away from your sin. It says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. If you call yourself a Christian and you're walking in sin, you're a liar. You're not a Christian. You're not born again. Jesus calls you a liar. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Watch that bag, ma'am. I don't want you to fall.
I mean, we can get a speaker too. If I, we have a speaker. We have a speaker. So. I just encourage you to let them set it out. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I just stopped preaching. Amen, brother. Because I'm just wasting my voice at that point. Huh? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Plus, we got a sign. Keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that. You don't even know me. Keep telling yourself that, man. I, you're, you don't know the world yet, man. You don't know it. You're in a bubble, bro. To be able to tell people you have to be able to You don't know what a Christian is. You don't know what a Christian is. I listen to the Bible. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You don't know what a Christian is either. No, you don't. Nope. Nope. You don't love Jesus. Doesn't matter. Didn't do you no good. Didn't do you no good. Didn't do you no good. No, you don't have him, man. If you're walking in sin, you don't have Jesus. No, you are. I'm, t I'm showing you the truth. So I should be like you? Hey, my man, hey, my man, can you talk without cursing? Are you able to? Are you able to talk without cursing? It's, it's only, it's only, see, the, hey, listen, the truth sounds like hate to those that hate the truth. What's that? Are you judging me? I think you're judging me. Don't be a hypocrite. Sure they can, but they're not going to make it to heaven because the Bible says that. And it's not your place to judge me. Yeah, you are. You're a hypocrite. God bless you, man. I can't hear you. Well, I'm not a computer, so you know. Do, do you do you do you study textbooks? Have you memorized every word in your textbook? You could, right? Right, you could, but you don't. But you don't. I mean, it's a lot of words. I memorized some of it, but not all of it. Yeah, but that doesn't matter, really. Yeah, to you. I just left from. I can't hear you, man. Listen, yeah. I just came from doing my Bible. Okay. So I got sick. That doesn't mean anything to me. I get what you're trying to do. I preach the gospel too, but still, y'all are doing it the way. Okay, what gospel do you preach? Love Jesus. Love Jesus? You tell you pay you tell people what? What do you tell people when you share the gospel? First, my testimony. Jesus impacted my life. Okay, so so Jesus impacted your life. Have you stopped sinning? Good job. Now, do you tell people that they can stop as well? Through Jesus, because He loves them. Right. So that's what we're doing. We're showing them. We're showing them what's going to take them to hell. We're showing them that. Because those are the sins that bring people to hell. And we're trying to tell them that Jesus loves them enough that he died for them, that if they'll repent of their sin like you and me have, that Jesus can cleanse them of their sin and make them holy. That's the gospel. According to who? According to who? 
That's your opinion. That's not what the Bible says, though. Ma'am, ma'am, let me let me clarify. Let's clarify terms. Let's clarify terms. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna define terms, okay? No, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell. You're saying we're hating. We're saying we're hating. Okay. So this is where we need to be. This is where we need to be. So this is where we need to be. Okay. What does that have to do with us? Because we, it doesn't matter. I don't know what they're doing, but this is the way God leads us. It's, it doesn't matter. We are preaching the gospel. No, we're not trying to. We are. We're sharing the word of God. According to who? You know how many people? You know, there, there might be one, two, three, four, five that you don't even know are listening because they come up to us later or they, they, they email us or something. So then don't, you can go home. Yeah. That's all right. That's what that shit around. Okay, but they're both right. See, that's your problem. You don't, you. See, no, nah, no, nah, you don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus. Okay, is Jesus going to throw some people into hell? Then you don't know Jesus. Obviously you don't. Jesus is going to throw some people. You know what Jesus said? That there's more people that are going to go to hell than th those that go to the kingdom of God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. We have a conversation, look. We have a conversation. That, that is negative. That's biblical. I understand, but if it's negative, negative to you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let, listen. You want to have a conversation? Listen. Sorry. Listen to me. Listen to me. From your perspective, that looks like hate. But from God's perspective, that's love. Let me ask you a question. If there was a cliff, right? There was a cliff and you're driving and there was no sign to say, there's a cliff, stop driving. Would that be love or hate? That would be hate. You want to put a sign there to, to help them stop driving. Hey, he was the one that was trying to make sure everybody was okay. I feel threatened by him now. <laughs> no, he's not. Absolutely not. According to the homosexual, no. What I'm, hold on, I wasn't done because they started screaming. So, so this is a sign in love to tell people, hey, if this is in your life, you're going to drive off a cliff. And the only answer is Christ. So it's not negativity. It's only, it's only negativity to those that don't understand the message, like yourself. To say somebody is on the way to hell is not, is not like an insult. It's the reality of their condition. And if it is true, then it's the epitome of love for a man to come out and tell them that truth. All right, so, all right, so this is my rebuttal. All right. My friend Gabe, he said a verse. I don't remember the verse. John said something. All right, he said that blah, 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 love each other at all times. That's what God said. Okay, so what's love? All right, love is loving each other. I can't say it anymore. What's love? Because in the... Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm asking him. What is the bi what is God's love? Not your opinion of love, but what is God's love? What is it? Yes, there there's boundaries. There's boundaries. Yes, there are. I'm talking to him. God's love is boundless. He doesn't care what There are boundaries. He does care what you do. Why would Jesus hold on? Hold on. No, 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 no. You're not a Christian. How, why would Jesus tell the adulterous woman after he healed her or forgave her to go and sin no more? Why would he say that? Why would he say that? I've already talked to him. Yeah. She was already publicly shamed. Okay. And so they were, they were about to kill him, kill her. Right? And where was the man? How come the man wasn't there? He committed adultery as well. Okay? So they brought her to try to trick Jesus to see if he was going to stone her. And what did Jesus say? Right? He who is without sin cast the first stone. Right? And 
And those were, listen, those weren't like insults. Those were real stones because they were about to kill her. And Jesus had every right to condemn her because he's perfect and he's God. But he decided to show her mercy. Why? Because she was in repentance. Because she was in repentance in the Bible. She was in re she was in repentance, and then after he forgave her, he gave her a charge. Don't do this again. Go and sin no more. Now, he also healed a leper, and he told the leper, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. And so Jesus is very strict on sin, but he is merciful. See, you got to preach the full counsel of God. Everybody loves his love and mercy and justice and holiness, or in holiness, but... But, but they don't talk, they don't want to talk about sin. Jesus himself said, they, the world hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. And he also said, if the world hates you, just know that it hated me first. And so, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What does that mean? In my entire life? No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know what you're trying to do, but listen. Are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? Okay. So there was a time in my life where I was lost, right? Are you going to listen? I'm going to give you my testimony. It will answer, it will answer your question. What's up, bro? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not avoiding your question. I'm trying to answer it, but you're being real rude. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't know that much about the Bible. I will admit that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pretend. But the only thing I do know is what's unnecessary. There According to who, though, bro? Uh, there are no sinners in the kingdom of God. No, 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 no. There are no sinners, only ex sinners. And that's true. Repent of your sins and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's disrespectful. That's all y'all need. That's all that no, that's all not. That right there. Listen, listen, guys, listen, listen to me. Just know that the apostles and Jesus Christ preached both of this. They rebuke sin and they preach the gospel. You can't just say, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, turn to Jesus, whatever, and not talk about sin. Bro, what about you, though, bro? Where are you going to be when you die? It is about you. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here. It's about you, bro. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. Yes. Let me finish. Let me finish my statement. Go ahead. I understand what this is what you've chosen. Everybody has free will. Everybody has Of course. If they do that, at the end of the day, you must respect your choice as a person, as a human being. That respect has nothing to do with this, bro. It's love, bro. I know. I, listen, bro, if I see a crowd going to hell, God compels me to preach the gospel. Who, who's making, who, how, how am I making myself a higher status? And that's why we're here, bro. That's why we're here. There's no greater love than a man laid down his life. We're here to take this abuse and share the truth for you. That's right. That's right. What? You said, there's no greater love than a man. Show me a gay man that lays down his life. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a hypothetical. It's just a hypothetical. Conversation collapsed on itself. No, it's a hypothetical you're bringing. You're not. That's not a good argument. It's hypothetical, but obviously it happened. Okay. How do you know? I doubt it didn't happen. Dude. Gay people don't love each other. They lust after each other. You see, homosexuality, according to the Bible, is a sin against God. And Jesus himself in Matthew 19 defines but, marriage but, between a man and a woman. And they're former homosexuals. Yes, but they're still homosexuals. No, they're not. No, they're not. X. Sorry, bro. It's your classmates, bro. They're ignorant, so. You know. 
Nice communist star you got there, buddy. This man's wearing a communist star, a ideology that was responsible for killing millions of people. You talk about racism. You talk about racism. You see that symbol right there? That's a racist symbol. Not the Cuban. This. This right here. That's a racist symbol. You guys are blind. You guys are blind. Calm down, you're gonna faint. You're gonna faint. Calm down. Calm down. Why don't you look up the symbolism of that star right there? On his hat. No, on his hat. That's a communist symbol. Do you know what communism has done in the, in the world? Ask him. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You better tell him to take that hat off. You better tell him to take that hat off. It's a racist symbol. That white hat is a racist symbol. Yeah. No, it's not about this anymore. Yeah. No, it's about I care about your well-being as a person. Bro, let me tell you something, bro. Let me tell you. I've been in the Middle East. No, I I've preached at many places. Jesus has my back, and, and, and I'm ready to die for the gospel. I understand completely. So you don't have to care about my well-being. It's okay. I don't care about your well-being as a good person. You understand? I'm only good because of Christ. There's nothing, nothing I've done to become a good person other than the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I just want to alert you and your friend to be careful. Okay? Bro, no, no, I'm, we're not scared. I know you're not scared. We're no, not scared, bro. No. I've been knocked out no, 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 no. for this gospel. It's about, that. about that. It's about, so, I, I care. I don't want you guys to get hurt. Okay? Oh, I don't want to see that. I'm not worried about it. I know. I just want to let you know that I care about that. Okay? okay. Well, we're not it's worried about it, bro. My kindness and my okay? Thank you. Pray for us, then. I know. I know. Yeah, hold on. Let me get some water. Yeah, what's up? All right. So I understand this. Um, whenever I, I honestly, I, I won't lie to you. Sir. I'm not gonna lie. Say this because other people would. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not that person. Okay. I, I hear I, you, bro. You, you're level-headed, bro. Whenever I was a kid. Yeah. Um, back when I was 12 years old, I was going to church a lot. Yeah. I almost was saved. I knew I was, but I choose not to be. Yeah. I thought, in my opinion, it wasn't my time. What's your name? My name's Jose. Well, uh huh. I said my name's Jose. Jose, okay. I'm Adam. All right. All right. Nice to meet you, Adam. But look. When I was 12 years old, I, I truly believed. Yeah. I, I could have been, you never know, but I truly believed that I felt the power of God. Yeah. Because I went to Winterfest and I felt that power Amen. when we were there. Yeah. I went to all, I felt all that people, I felt that energy. It was something I've never felt before. Yeah. But I know that this is not it. I don't. But you're judging that based on what? I'm judging it based off the, the truth. Off of Look, bro, wait, let me no, tell you something. No, no, no. There's people that have come to the Lord through this gospel, bro. It's not about us, man. All right. It's not about us. It's the truth. I know. And so, so what you need to do, bro, Jose, right? Jose? Jose? Yeah, Jose. Jose, what you need to do is take the truth, bro, and stop running from God. Go to your go to your dorm room and, and seek the Lord with all your heart. Man. I understand. You know what no, I'm saying? I, uh, and 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 you don't have to be. You don't have to be caught up with all this, bro. You can be free from no, sin no, and be it. saved, man, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know. The truth is the truth, correct? Right? Absolutely. But it depends <laughs> on how you deliver it. It's all but about the, but the oh, truth okay. sounds like hate to those that hate the truth. Yes. We get this argument okay, no. every college so, campus, okay, bro. So I need to understand this. So you're telling me that you are praising this message. I'm praising no Jesus. Hate in your heart. Absolutely. Okay, okay, I understand. Absolutely. I respect that, okay? Absolutely. It's just you delivering a message, okay? But but you got to understand your position, bro. You're telling me this as somebody. I my position as them. You're telling. Because we see this. Like, I'm, like, we can fucking. No, no, back up, back up. Don't, don't be disrespectful, okay? Be, be mature and level headed, okay? It's all about. All right, look. All right, look. look He's right. Look. So, imagine. I'm being racist. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What did you say? I'm being racist? I have a black wife, bro. I got a black wife. You got black friends, so that means you're not racist? My children are African-American. 
So, so do I hate my children? Okay, so stop accusing me of being a racist. Okay, okay, okay. If the man said he's done, if the man said he's done, then he's done, you see? Go ahead. Okay, I don't know if that's true. I hope it's not, but if it is... About what? I, I, I'm saying, I don't know if this is true, because I don't trust nobody, okay? You understand? We get accused of a lot of stuff, no, bro. It's all good. All right, look. It's not, it's not, so it's not a matter. Imagine it from our perspective, okay? Like, imagine you're just not a Christian. Imagine it's just us as college students. We walk. I came out the library. I saw this. Praise I'm God. Like, oh shit! What's, what's happening? All I see is it seems like a hate crime towards my other. What's the hate crime? What's What's the hate crime? No, no, no. I didn't say it was. Oh. I said it seems like one because okay. if you turn that sign around, it has a lot of social groups in it. Like so Muslims, homosexuals. Saying that they're gonna burn. Okay, look. Okay, is this, it true? No, no, no. Look, look, let me finish. In the Bible. Uh -huh. This is factual. It is true. But the thing is that it depends on how you deliver it. Everybody has free will. Right now, what it sounds like is that you're forcing to be like, oh, do it, do it. We're not forcing anybody. Right? They, they're not chained to the ground. Right. If they don't like the message, they can go to class. It doesn't have to be physical. It could be mental, emotional. Somebody. But right we're, now, not, we're not doing that, bro. I know, but look, we're, we're, think, we're operating in what God has called us to operate in. Think about it. There's one person in this crowd that their life is changing due to this right now. But not in a good way, a negative way. No, not not at the truth, no. That's wrong. The, no, as That's a, your opinion. I, I know, I know. It's my opinion. I, yeah. I understand. It's your opinion. It's just, I can tell you Bro, right. I can tell you testimony after testimony of people that have that have been encouraged by the message. It, it's all about each other's Bryson. No, I understand Bryson. That's right. That's right. But no no, he's good. No, 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 he's good. He's good. Right, That's what's in his heart, bro. It's no, hate. It's right. so. Don't don't instigate. It's right. Bro, it's I'm not right. instigating. I'm telling the truth. It's alright. Look, he needs help. All right, it's alright. That's all right. Everybody needs help. All right. That's all I have to say. Look. Bro. All right. It's understandable what you're doing, but it's not the bro. Way. I, I'm not gonna justify myself anymore oh, no, with you, bro. To. This no, is what you need no, to do, no, Jose. No, listen, no, listen, no, listen. No, listen. No, the last page, not that much. Bro, no, it's no. this. You're telling me the same thing over and over again. It's getting boring. So what I'm saying to you is, bro, this is the truth, and you need it. Okay. And if you don't listen, listen. Oh, if you don't, if you don't repent of your sin, if you don't repent and get back to God, okay. and you die like tomorrow, okay. you're not going to the right, kingdom right. of God, bro. And that that bothers me. Okay. All right, all right. That bothers me. Okay, what you're saying is true. You're repeating this over and over. It's getting boring. All right, it's getting boring. Well then, but then, you back. but you back. okay, all but right. you're not gonna say that to all Christ right. when I you know, stand before Him, bro. All right. Yeah, go ahead. So regardless. Uh, your message is what? It's the Bible's message, bro. That's you know, it's it's the word of God. You, you still love all people. Do I love all people? I wouldn't yes. be here if I didn't love these people. Okay. Why? Why would I come here knowing the abuse I'm going to take, mm -hmm. taking away time from my family of five? Well, I, have, well, I just had a newborn son, so Thanks. we're six now. Um, three girls and a boy. Ooh. Why would I do that? They're all homeschooled, so yeah. why would I do that? to come take this kind of abuse mm -hmm. if I didn't love these people? What's my motive? Okay, like to, to be some noise? No, it's love, bro. The it's the love of God. Is that, what they have to say is that as a man, I will respect you for that, because that takes a lot of balls. Not many people have that. I'll give you that. I will give you that with respect. But I can say it again over and over. Other people, probably other people like me will say it. This is not the way, okay? According to who? I know. Look, I gotta go by the word of God. To other Christians too. I don't care what other Christians I, I say. I, I care what that. the Bible says, I bro. Okay. That's it. That's it. So, I mean, that's it, man. No, I understand. Look, but the Bible has its way. Why would you do that and follow it that way? You're your own person. You can be so much more if you develop your own way. There's nothing more than Christ, bro. You're trying. See, bro. From my perspective, from God's perspective in the Bible. You're lost. You're trying to find your way. And so you're probably looking at a lot of different truths right now. I don't know. You're trying to find your way. But you're go you got to come back to the way Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No man comes to the Father but by me. But I chose at the end of the day free will. Because you loved your sin. I, of course, I mean, I love the world. I really do. I want to enjoy it before I go with my time. But you could die tonight, man. You could die tonight. I don't want you to die in your sin, Jose. I don't want you to die in your sin, bro. I know, I understand. That's why I'm here. And That's I why we're here. I appreciate your concern, and, and that towards everybody else. And I can't force you, bro. I, I can just you tell can. you. It's just, it's just, just the way you. it is. I understand. It is what it is. I but can just tell you. The only thing I have to say, otherwise, is that 
They obviously, obviously their eyes right now, they're very, emotion is taking over. You should talk for yourself, bro. Don't talk for them. Oh, it's the, I, I know I can't. I know I can't. Speak for yourself. But I'm not speaking for myself. You got to speak for yourself. You can't speak for them, man. But no, you don't remember, know what's going on in their minds. Remember, at the end of the day, it's my choice if I want to walk by. Absolutely. Or I can choose to speak my mind. You know what I mean? That's fine. That's, That's fine. fine. That. Take that with you, bro. It's just a booklet, different scriptures on on faith and repentance. Okay, I understand. All right. The only thing, I, the last thing I could possibly say is that, in my opinion, this is not the way. There's better ways. The scripture did say that, I guess. Yeah, but they don't know what love is. God's love is not their love. But think about it, though. How do you know that you love? Because I read it and believe it. Okay. That's what I was going to give you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Okay. Take care, Jose. Uh, but also, remember, just think about this. What they have to say, this is the last thing I have to say. Now, think in your mind right now. Don't push this question away. Think in your mind. Think about this. Now, look around. Look around. I want you to look around, please. Look around. Let's, let me ask you this. If my whole life I was drinking muddy water, okay. and I found pure water, and somebody was trying to tell me to go drink that muddy water again, would I be a fool or wise to go drink that muddy water again? It's your decision. It's your decision. I'd be a fool. So if I found pure water, right, I'm going to hold on to it with all my heart. My mind is closed now because I found that water of living water, living water from Christ, right? You don't even know my testimony, what I've seen, what I've done in Christ, not what I've done, I'm sorry, what I've experienced in Christ, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, that's my testimony. What matters is the word of God, right? And I found that water of living, living water, right? And the world hasn't. And so you gotta find that. And, and, and there's no, I'm closed-minded now because I found it, right? I found the answer, I found Christ. But before that, I had an open mind and everything, when you have an open mind, everything flows into it, like a sewer. So. I'm good, man, I'm good, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. I've said what I had to say to you, bro. You too, Jose. So, before I answer that question, man's experience is irrelevant to what the Bible says. Because we all have a flesh that can be tempted. That doesn't mean we're all going to sin and it doesn't mean we're all sinners. Now there have been times after being born again that I chose to heed to a temptation and therefore sin. That doesn't mean that the Bible's not true. Oh, the Bible's true, yeah. Right, so when I did that, yes, I became a sinner again. But this is what the Bible says. If you sin, not when you sin, if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the man Christ Jesus, right? So repent of that and come back to Christ. Ask the Lord, Lord, how did I fall for that temptation? Well, this is how my son, this is how my daughter, you know, I want you to draw nearer to me. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So somewhere I listened to the devil and the temptation and I ended up in sin and I backslid, okay? Right? And if I would have died in that condition, I'd be on my way to hell. But by God's grace, I didn't die and he brought me back to himself, okay? And so now by the Holy Spirit, I learned from that experience and I, and, I, and I believe what the Bible says, that God can deliver me out of any temptation, that I'm holy because of the Spirit of God in me. And, and just because you get an evil thought doesn't mean that's sin. That could be a temptation. It's what you do with that evil thought. It's what you do with that evil thought that could turn into sin or not. Am I going to reject it in the name of Jesus? Or am I going to say, oh man, yeah. Yeah, that woman looks good. I wish I could have sex with her, you know, whatever. Right? So yeah. I, I, I have a question though. Yeah. Um, by bringing this right and telling people right, um, they gay or like religion right, and like, do you think that's the right way to, to, to send a message? Well, because it's only going to fuel their fire up even more. Well, that message is not fueling up the fire. What's in them is fueling up the fire. You see, if I came out here and I just preached, oh, God loves you. God loves you. He has a great future for you. You know, come to Jesus. He'll accept you. Accept him into your heart. Who wants to, you know, who wouldn't want a God like that? I can sin all I want and Jesus loves me and go to heaven. But as soon as you tell them the problem, 
with why you're not born again, that's where people get mad. I feel like you, like, well, not, like, you know, like, I, I mean, they killed the they, apostles and Jesus. They did, and I feel like, but like, there's better ways to send a message, right? According to who, though? Hmm? According to the world? No, according to the gospel. No, bro. No, no, In the gospel, it says to proclaim it, proclaim, preach it, but and preach against sin. Preach, preach the full counsel of God. My preaching might be different from your preaching. Okay. So you can't come so, against so, the way so, God uses me, I'm, then. No, I'm not coming against you. you, you, you. I'm not. I'm, I'm, God, I'm, God. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying. I'm not saying you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that whatever God has planned for you, right? Like if God has to come out here, that's God. You know Look, man. Everybody's but, built I, differently. Yeah, Everybody has different everyone, callings. Everyone had different. You know. I, me and you are talking right now. Yeah, I'm not absolutely. preaching. Yeah, so I, I've, I've had relationships with people in the past to try to lead them to Christ. You know, I've been in the Middle East and shared the gospel there. Um, you know, Atlanta, you know, wherever. Other colleges, Columbus, you know, whatever. But it's not always preaching. But there's nothing wrong with that because it's telling the truth. And our hearts love these people. And just because we're judged the way we're judged by these people, Whoever's getting mad, Why you right? You just doesn't these doesn't mean. These people. Excuse me. These what are you insinuating? Why you're to just these people because I see that there are sins on there. There's plenty of other sins that you have failed to leave. Oh. Okay. When I so it's a better way. That All right. You can come, come on, man. He's talking ahead. foolishness now. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So so just because people react the way they do, yeah. right? People react the way they do doesn't mean that the message is wrong or I'm not coming out of love. When a father spanks their son, does that mean he hates him? No. If they're out of line? No. Oh, Dad, you hate me. Why'd you spank me? I'm spanking you because I love you, son. And I don't want you to be, I don't want you to be uh, disobedient, you know? Yeah. So, so says the wicked sinner. I understand what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, like if, if the Holy Spirit is filled, is filled within you guys, and if, if, this is, if this is your calling, right? Like, it's, it's our respect, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Bible says that if the world hates you, remember, it, it hated me first. Of course. And, um, you know, like, what, like I feel like what you're doing, to me, honestly, I feel like what you're doing right now is right, you know what I'm saying? But, like, if I, if I was in your shoes, right, I would probably have done it in a better way, but I'm not you, and you're not me. Yeah. So, like, like yeah, I'm not going to judge you because, like, like I said, if this is what God tells you to do. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. You can go, absolutely, like, you can do We got the freedom to do it. You have free will, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 I mean, we didn't chain anybody's feet to the ground to no. stay here and listen. No, no, you know what I'm saying? We just come out here to preach the truth. And this is what the gospel does, actually. Throughout history, this is what it does, right? That's why people were killed for this faith, man. Empires hated the true saints, man, because they, they preached the truth against sin and Christ Jesus. And they called out hypocrisy, they called out false doctrine, and they were murdered, they were beaten, they were tortured, they were, they, they were hated by the world. So this right here is not something we come to look for, it's just a natural result of telling the truth. And this is what Jesus said in the Bible. We don't come out here looking for, for these kind of things. We just come out here to preach the truth and glorify God and hope that somebody hears. And sometimes people hear because they reach out to me. They reach out to me, you know? I, I, I'll give you one testimony out of a few. When we were at Kennesaw State one year, um, I had a late, I ended up, I was preaching at Woodstock one time and there was a lady that worked across the street and I bring my daughters out sometimes, you know, I got three daughters uh, and they come out sometimes. And, uh, and uh, uh, she came over to one of my daughters and was like, hey, was your dad preaching at Kennesaw State? She's like, man, I heard what he said and I went home and I gave my life to Jesus that night, you see? So it's not gonna be, this is the majority of how it's going to be received, right? And that's going to drown out the narrow, the people. You know, Jesus said narrow is the way and few that find it. So there are going to be some here that are a little intimidated to come up and talk to us, you know, but they're going to go home and they're going to seek the Lord. So it's not our job to save people. It's our job to tell the truth and, and before God in love, because most people here don't think we're coming in love because they don't like what they hear. And so they equate that with hate, right? But they don't know God. So I don't expect them to know what love is until they know Christ. Yeah, they do. Uh, I, I got to go to class soon. Go ahead, man. 
I'm like, you know, like, like I said, like, if this is what, if this is what you're calling me to do, like, I, you know, to me, as a I mean, Christian, I'm, as a Christian, I'm I lead worship too, you know, on the yeah, keyboard I, and stuff like that, you know. As a Christian, like, as, as a faithful student of Christ, I'm going to respect it, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, we are, we all direct in different ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, me, like, if I like, if I were in your shoes, I would probably do it in a different way, like, but, like, it's saying people will react in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? But you also have to remember that God laughs at the wicked because he knows what the times are. Of course. So that's how, to, you know, to have an open mind and stuff. But, like, you know, I respect you. And, you know, I, I, I got it. But I was talking to you, though. You too, man. Take care. Yeah. Thanks for waiting. I just really have to push up. Yeah. I'm a psychology major, so okay. I just want to know why your perspective is going to be So, when you come, what is basically your main purpose for the book of your Our purpose for being here? Yeah. Um, it's one, to glorify God because of what he's done in my life. And it's two, to obey the commandment to go preach the gospel. Right? So, God has given every Christian a commandment to share the gospel. Not everybody's going to stand up and preach. Not everybody's called to that. Evangelism is one calling, but there's other things, right? But we're all, as Christians, supposed to share the gospel in some way. And so that's pretty much my main purpose, that God will be glorified, that if there's Christians here, they will be edified, and that people will be saved by God's grace. We can't save them, God can. And earlier I heard you talk about Muhammad and something relating to like African and things like Yeah. Okay, so I was talking to a Muslim who is African American and I was refuting some of the points in the Quran and I was educating him about the Trans Saharan slave trade. So the Mohammedan Muslims actually institutionalized African slave trade before any other people group. You know, for eight hundred years. They they were they were trafficking Africans across the northern northern Africa, right? And it was a brutal slave trade. And not a lot of people look into that deep history. Most people focus on European slave trade, which is equally uh, detestable. But there was already slavery going on in Africa for like 800 years or something like that because of the Mohammedan Muslims. And they, they subjugated black people in Africa first. And then, you know, there were tribes, African tribes being forced into Islam and things like that. So, so by the time the Europeans got there, there was, there was Muslim tribes and Bantu tribes as well, giving them over to the Europeans, selling them into the Europeans. And then it started all that debacle for what, hundreds of years, until finally it was abolished. It took a long time though. So, but it was started, institutionalized, the, the slave trade for Africans was institutionalized by Muslims. That's what it was. And then it just continued from there to the Europeans or whatnot. Yeah. So, so when I see an African-American Muslim, I try to share them with that. Like, look, your, your founder hated you. <laughs> like, Muhammad hated black folks. And so did, uh, and then atheists too. Atheists, right? Which is based on Darwinian macroevolution. Well, Charles Darwin believed that Africans and Aborigines were on the bottom of the evolutionary scale when it comes to humans. But yet, I walk around and see all these atheists that are African-American. I'm like, dude, don't you understand where your, where your doctrine comes from? Did you, where your doctrine comes from is a racist doctrine? Yeah. Are you even listening to what I'm saying? No, I'm not. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so, how did I disrespect everybody? Okay, I'm talking to her. She's being respectful, so. So, yeah, that's... So, so those, no, I know she is. She's actually a lot more respectful than you. So, so I kind of educate folks like that just to dig into that. I mean, I'm not an expert. You can dig into it to yourself. So that's what, that's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. She just, I keep answering the same question. So. You know, we, we go to where we're led to go, by God's grace. This is the first time we've been at Valdosta State, but it's not the first college camp. He's been doing this 20 years. I've been doing this six years. We go to Atlanta, Columbus, other college campuses, out of town. We'll be at another college campus tomorrow. Um, so I'm not telling you. <laughs> uh, you have his website? It might be, yeah. Yeah. Huh? A what? The flyer. 
<laughs> oh, like a track? Yeah, I got a track for you. Well, here's one track. Yeah, no problem. You're full of false psychotic. You're here for the views. You're full of false psychotic. You pray for it night. Because like I said, if you're not here for the views, take the camera off right now and preach gospel. Well, that's the kind of prayer God will never answer, sinner. God doesn't hear the prayers of sinner. If you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not hear. You got a nice thumbnail. Are you going to be nice? I've been nice this whole time. I okay. tried to talk to your friend, but he didn't want to talk to me either. And I've asked Were you nice to him? Yes, I said, excuse me, can I please talk to him? And you know what he No, he's not. Yes, he, he, Don't talk about my brother like that. He, he is. Oh, that's my brother. <laughs> no, he's my Christian brother. <laughs> okay. Is, so like, I'm not even going to ask you, Adam. You, when y'all leave, you need to talk to your Christian brother about how he's approaching people because y'all can't say we need to come up to y'all nice and he's not approaching to anybody else. Well, but that's besides what I'm He's he's say. not what is he doing that's not nice? Tell me. That's besides what I'm It's how he's coming at it. He's not coming at anybody like that. No, I didn't say coming. I said oh, coming. I can't hear with the mask. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, maybe you need to wear your do. Uh no. But, I'm not uh, scared of that. I, I didn't say I was scared. I have a grandmother that I gotta go home to. I got children. I, I'm not, and that's what you should be Four of them. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not gonna put your child in this. I'm you believe the lie, I don't. I'm not putting your family in this and your child in this. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. So, so what are you trying to say? My, I'm, I'm still trying to figure is, it out, yeah. My question is, how would y'all feel for somebody to come, because if you're supposed to be, you said you're preaching the word and spreading the truth, right? You haven't, I haven't seen neither one of y'all. I asked him, open your Bible and give me a scripture to make me believe all this stuff. Well, it's probably the way you came at him. He probably be discerned your attitude. No, I don't have an attitude. That's the thing. And that's a lot of, that's what the problem is with around the world. Is that every single time, somebody like me. What do you mean like me? What does that mean? No, you know what, you know what I mean. I don't know. We're not going to play these games. I don't know. But every time somebody like me. Anybody else got something to say? No. I mean, because she's, she's. Say. You're just so, 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 so what, what do you mean like me? What do you mean like me? Well, I'm trying to listen, but she's not clarifying herself. I don't know what you mean. I need you to. I'm listening. I'm not going to obey you. I don't okay. Want you to obey then me. tell me what you mean by me. What I do you mean, people? I can't tell you that when you keep talking over me. Okay, I'll be quiet. When I say people like me, I mean as a black woman. Okay, my wife's black. That's where I don't care. Wait, right now. Is if black. your wife is black, she's making it black and white, no, not me. I'm not making it black and white. What I'm saying is that you find it that I'm being aggressive, and I'm ne I wasn't aggressive. I, at I don't all. think you're aggressive you're because you're black. I think you're aggressive like because that. you're aggressive. I'm not aggressive because I'm aggressive because nothing about this is aggressive. You're the one that brought race into it. Right now. You're talking to Tyra. If you were talking to Anthony, that would have been aggressive. That would have been I'm aggressive. Not, I'm not scared. But that's, not, that's not what I'm trying to get on to. What I was going to ask you is how do y'all come to somebody's campus, supposed to be spreading the truth, spreading the word, and you haven't read not one part of that Bible? You just falsely accused me. Nothing. I didn't falsely accuse you of nothing because I've been standing here. Y'all been here since 12, 11. I've been standing here. I was late for my you whole life. You just lap. falsely accused me. Y'all haven't read not one thing. Sure, I we have. You. I asked you. I have. You. Read, read one right us? now. Read one right now. No, Spreading I don't obey you. In the gospel? <laughs> but we have to obey you. I don't obey. Who, who said you have to obey me? I'm not making you stand in that spot right now. You got the free will to go to class. I was saying it back you want somebody to be on your side, you I don't care. You know what I want? You don't even know what I want because you're talking too much. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you what I believe in. And then you just go like that. This is only going on. I'm so scared. These are are ridiculous. This is hatred being spread. What's hatred? Tell me. Tell me what's hatred. Tell me what's hatred. Your signs are so... What's hateful about it? What's hateful about it? came on campus and be like, I want to share my story with you. What's hateful? That's what you would have liked to hear, right? That's what you should have been doing. Says who? You? I'm not listening to you. That's probably what got somebody to convert. How do you know? Let me tell you my story. This is what I struggled with. This is what I went through. This is how I found my peace. This is the God that I serve. And he turned it around. So go do that. Instead, you come here with these nonsense. So go do that. That spread hatred to everybody on this campus. Go tell them. Look. You have offended. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not ashamed. 
I'm not ashamed. You know why? Because Jesus said that they would hate. I can't hear you because she's too loud. I'm not ashamed at all. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Not ashamed of the gospel. Young adults, we're still learning. You could have came if you would have approached us the right way. We probably would have followed you. Tell it to God. I don't want you to follow me. You approached it the wrong way. According to you. You are talking to young adults that still learn the According to you. And that's how you. That's how you reject. According to you. Yourself. Hate. According to you. But it's okay. You want to talk about the Lord, I, baby? I was growing up in the church. Doesn't matter. Pray, didn't do you no good. I pray for you. Didn't do you no good. I didn't do you no good. Didn't do you no good. Oh, it did me a lot of good. No. Baby, You're still you. angry. Let me tell you, I'm not angry, love. Still angry. I'm not angry. Cause let me tell you, if it was all me, your ass would have been laid the fuck out. I'm so scared. It's Look at that, and you're cursing. You're not a Christian. Baby, you're a liar. You're a hypocrite. I know. I know when I see it. You're lost. I know when I see it. You need to turn now, to Jesus. Every night. Well, he didn't, every well, obviously night. you don't love him. Every single night. You don't love him. Church, I praise my God every single time. With blood on your every hands. Every single day. With blood I, on your hands. That doesn't heart. mean anything. He knows my heart. But I'm going to tell you. There's many that will come to me God saying, Lord, Lord. You're, you're the devil. That's a straight I'm the devil. Demon that's inside of you. Now I'm the that's devil. That's a straight demon that's inside I'm, of you. I have a but demon. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you because I'm telling you. The, old the woman who's a sinner says she's a Christian, but I'm a demon. I'm my hands on you. I'm telling you, but it's okay. Okay, I'm going to open the Bible for you. I'm done talking to you. I'm going to talk to you. This is for you. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? This is what Jesus is saying. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's what Jesus is going to say to you if you don't get right with God. I'm already right with God. Not if you're a sinner. He ain't gonna say all that to you. What's your question? No, we don't all sin. It's a lot of fuckery in this thing. To hell. A lot. You just full of hate. Hate. We're talking about how Jesus is dead and relates to judgment. That's the gospel. I'll tell you this. That's the gospel. Now let us not the gospel. Let us not the gospel. The idea that God is not the gospel. What was the point of Jesus dying on the cross? If he died without bearing the wrath of God, then the wrath of God is oh, on wow. you right now. Calvinism. Tell me right now. If, if Jesus did not bear the wrath of God for you, then it did not go on anybody else. Well, no, it goes on to everybody no, else but him. No. No. Because when Jesus Christ did the cross, he was a substitutionary atonement for us. So he got... Hold on. He got. See, if you, you want to go down these paths, these Calvinistic paths. I studied Calvinism for 15 years. We're not here to talk about Calvinism. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. That's private property. You, that's private property. That's private property. No one right now. You need to go home. No. You go to jail. You go to jail because that's private property. Wow, wow, this is our fucking property. This is, it's not your property. This is public property, ma'am. Do some research before you talk. That's what you're telling me. I'm not saying you have to believe in You don't have to believe in the evil substitution to be a Christian. It's absurd. I'm not talking to you, man. See, that's pride. He became sin. That's, he knew that's no sin. And what does that mean? That, sins, you know? that he took on He literally sin. became a sinner? Yes. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. That Calvinism has corrupted your mind, bro. There is no way else for you to get to the Father except for that way. There's no doubt about that. Jesus but what he said before sin. that is blasphemy. You guys can't be up here, man. What you, what you said before that is blasphemy. You said that Jesus became a sinner. It is. He took on the form but you can't put hands on people. He was without sin. He was without sin, but he took the form of a sinner. He did not take the form of a sinner. I didn't say he did. I'm saying, as a matter of fact, that you can't put hands on people. I didn't say they did. I'm stating that it's a free country, right, to come up here. 
But typically, typically when students are riled up, they want to get violent sometimes. So I don't, I don't know. No, bro. No, no, no. If we want to do it, see, you don't do what we do, bro. We've seen a lot. Honestly, I don't care what you do. All right. But I'm just saying, if we want to come here, turn to Jesus, bro. I'm not scared, bro. I'm not scared. You're right. I'm not your bro. I don't care, bro. I don't care if I get on your nerves, man. I'm not scared of you. I'm shaking in my boots. I'm not scared of you. You know why? You know why? Because God, God is, God has me. According to who? You? You? Ha! You're not my judge. I'm not angry, bro. Wait, but you said we could judge in a sense of righteousness. But you're not judging righteousness. You're, you're, you're judging as a hypocrite. No. I didn't say I was a prophet. You have no argument, bro. In your pride, you're sitting there trying to have arguments. You don't have one. Just admit that you do too. Okay, so, so you're like, you kind of like Spurgeon. Hey, you say, Calvin, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. It is what it is. But all you got to do is repent. I don't think it's exactly. You say he didn't say it. That was a sin by him saying that he had to say it. I don't think it's synonymous with the gospel. Charles Virgin. But I think it is at the heart of the gospel. I'm here to drink. Calvin has nothing to do with the gospel, in my opinion. Absolutely nothing. Okay, but we can go ahead to 2 Corinthians 5 and talk about him who had no sin. Okay, so I'm just saying, him who had no sin became sin for us, the righteous God of might right. be considered righteous in God's sight, right? So you look at that scripture and we compare it with the Old Testament, which is what it's pulling from. Jesus did not become a sinner in any kind of sense. Just like the scapegoat did not become a sinful goat in any kind of sense. But he was a sin offering. You still here, bro? We must be really exciting for you. Why are you still here? I have no hope. Hey, I, I, I stay here. I, I live here. This is my campus. So why the fuck you here? Okay. So I'm why are you right still with here? God through the sacrifice. Are you gonna be here till midnight? Because we can stay here. Man. Man. I can be here all day. I can be here all night. I'm gonna be cleansed of my sins, forgiven of my sins. I got time. And be counted as if I got I'm righteous, time. even though I haven't been righteous. I agree with that. I've been wicked, man. I've been really wicked. I got more than that. But because of what Christ in the cross. I'm saying, look, I'm I can take a I'm break, get some to eat at home, I'm come right back, and be right back with the voice. It's not as if Jesus Christ is righteous as transferred to me. The Bible never teaches that, and logismai does not mean transfer. The word that's translated as impute in the English Bible does not mean transfer anywhere in any Greek lexicon. I used to be the AG myself. I look at other lexicons too. None of them define logismai as transfer. It's considerate. Reckon, that's right. So I'm reckoned as righteous because of what Christ did on the cross, even though I have not, I have a record of thousands of sins. It's on my, a record has not been, it's not done. God knows it's still there. He knows how wicked I've been. He doesn't have a bad memory. Okay? But he's still considering me as righteous because of what Christ did. But it's not transferred rights and transferred sin. Is there the unjust day? They want you. Is there the God? Ain't you here to preach the quote unquote gospel they want us to use? Right. And and yet there is no justice. I guess he can't hear now. I guess he can't hear. That's where we're going to have an issue because you you seem to be saying that, that God's justice must be satisfied. Absolutely. I'm saying okay, so your this, sign is true. But what, what's your I'm name? I'm saying for all who repent and believe in Jesus Christ, no matter, that judgment fell upon Christ on the cross. No. Therefore, they can walk no. into the presence of God. Then it fell on James and John as well. Because they drank of the same cup. That's the thing, Sorry, bro. That's the thing, though. See, so, so you're saying it has to go somewhere. I'm saying God forgives. I'm saying God forgives. Hold on, hold on a second. But, but just like Christ said, as I have forgiven you, so you also forgive. You don't require justice to be served when you forgive somebody. No, because I know the justice is in God, not in myself. Okay, He's but, the just judge. But listen, the word of fiamme, which is translates forgive, it does not mean justice satisfied. It means do not hold against any longer. Yeah. Okay? Okay, and, and here's the issue. See, if, if I were to believe what you believe, which is not based upon the Bible, in my opinion, 
I could never believe someone could depart from the faith. Now, I know you believe in P. I know you believe in first person saints, so obviously you don't believe that. But if I believe what you believe, I couldn't believe the biblical doctrine of conditional salvation and someone can depart from the faith who is really a gen, not a fake believer. I believe there's those two. Counterfeit Christians, yeah, yeah. false converts, whatever you want to call them, they exist. There's also people who are genuine believers who have departed from the faith and turned back to their sin, and their latter end is worse than the beginning. This is 2 Peter 2, 20, 21 talks about. Okay, so if I believe what you believe, which is not based upon the Bible, my fans, it's really philosophy. That's yeah. what it is. I, I can't find it anywhere in the scripture okay, that God's justice must be satisfied. It must be, his wrath must be poured out on somebody. I don't see that anywhere in scripture. Uh, if I believe that, then I would have to believe in Pete. Okay, what about, I would have to believe in what Steve always said. What about, that's not true. Now, what about Romans 3, where God is the just and the justifier of those because those who have faith in Christ because he put forward his son as a propitiation? Like, okay, propitiation does not mean God's wrath will pour out on us. In the Greek word, it's the last day, on, And he said the removal. The mercy seat was totally the last day. Exactly. Yeah. And what happened there? That's where the blood of his son was sprinkled on the altar. Okay, but what, was God's wrath poured out on that land? Not yet. No, no, no. no we're, we're in the Old Testament now. Not it before Jesus' death. So it's a shadow. So if it's a shadow, yeah. so it's a shadow yeah. and God's wrath was not poured out by that lamb who was slain, whose blood was put on the mercy seat once a year in the day of atonement, <laughs> then tell me how you, you're imputing Jesus must have God's wrath poured out upon him. And the Bible never once says that, even implicitly, let alone explicitly, does it ever say that Jesus, God's wrath is poured out upon Jesus on the cross. Never says anywhere. The closest you have is Isaiah 53. I didn't even say that. I didn't even say it. So, I mean, when I, when I, listen, I was a partial Calvinist at one point. I was coming real close to being a five-point Calvinist. All my Calvinist friends were trying to persuade me, come on, man. And I had a problem with L. Couldn't find that in the scripture. I had a problem with you. I couldn't find that in the scripture. Okay, so, let me go to L real quick. I'm, no, 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 no. I don't want to that bad. I'm already way past that, man. You're not going to convince me. No, I'm I'm saying, the, I think it plays into your heel <laughs> stereo. <laughs> I'm just simply saying that I've been down this path before, and I had to back in 2006 study all these things so thoroughly. And what I did, I took off my Calvinistic goggles that I was wearing. I used to have, and, and I will Southern Baptist. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I understand people have different paths. I'm just simply saying I had to take them off and say, listen, let me just read what the Bible says. And when I did that, I did not find Calvinism there. That's, that's cool. That's, we don't. Okay, I'm not aware of Calvinism. <laughs> Are you a Trinitarian Christian? Of course I am. Okay. Of Trinity's biblical. Okay. Would you identify with? Uh, you asked me about the Calvinists. The third tradition is you identify in? Early church. Early church fathers. Are we all? No, no. I'm, no I'm, 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 well, I'm not. I'm not saying the writers of the Bible. Obviously, we all say we believe like they do. I'm simply talking about like Irenaeus, Polycarp, Tertullian, Papias. You read their writings. Not unanimity. No, hold on a second. I just think Are you still here? I'm not saying I agree with everything they say. Okay, look at their soteriology. They're not Calvin. Not even close. They're kind of like me. They believe in free will. They believe you have a choice. Please don't can depart from the faith. They have to live a holy life. The other thing you see in the scriptures. So, I, but I'm I, I don't, I don't get what I believe from them. You don't strike me as a pale Baptist. I'm not a pale Baptist. Hey, baptized, baby. That's, that's what I'm. No, no. Well, that's later on. That's later on. Let me see. That's later on. That's later on. There were a couple who said that. But that's later on. That's a red herring. But, but, but yeah, it was, it was a red herring a little bit. But what I'm just simply saying is, I'm not getting my beliefs from them. I'm not saying I agree with them everything they say. I'm simply saying if you're gonna sue something with somebody, it'd be them or the Anabaptists. Okay. Who are slaughtered by the Calvinists, the Lutherans, and the Roman Catholics? I'm the first thing. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Reformed Baptist. I was, I'm a 16 year old Reforming. Okay. So you're, like, you're like James White, basically. Yeah. And okay. uh, Paul Washer. So, right, I agree. I've only Paul Washer doesn't really talk about that. He's kind of like skirts around the issue. He kind of talks about both sides Paul Washer would be standing here in a similar thing that you do. So I'm just here not to come against you sure. necessarily. I'm here to. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't get that from you. I didn't and get our, that from you. Our no. church members are, are sort of rattled and want to know what's going on. On, and I'm like, you don't take sides. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't take it as if you were coming against me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just simply saying that when it comes to Calvinism, but here's my. Question. I'm probably the most anti-Calvinist, more than even Leighton Flowers. Okay. Oh gosh. I'm more anti I didn't know there was another one. But I'm not. I'm not an open theist. I think he might be. I'm not an open theist. I'm not like so here's traditionalist my, or whatever. Here, here's my. Uh, here's my. Uh, I guess my, my last word. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's one of the ministers in this community. This campus is very liberal for our area. Yeah, very progressive. Yeah, we see. Very antagonistic. 
target. This thing brought a church hurt in this area. Um, and I would just plead with you guys to, to, to include that. Go over and beyond to include the message of, of how you can be saved off the hope. Oh, yeah, of course. Why would we not leave that out? Okay, well, I'll, I'll just say this. I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever preached on a college campus before. I, I've been doing it for about 17 and I've, years. I've, honestly, I've been considering what it might look like to do similar things like you guys were doing. So I'll, I'll just say this. What's your name, by the way? Clint. Clint, I'm Kerrigan. Clint. Kerrigan? Yeah, you can meet Clint. So Clint, I'll, I'm I'll Adam. just say this. That How you doing, Clint? When it, come, when it comes to preaching on a college, it's a whole different dynamic than preaching like on a street. Like I preach in front of concerts and sporting events and parades and festivals. Here you're going to get people yelling at you all at one time. Okay, so you have to decide, decide by the by the discernment of the Holy Spirit, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, who you're going to reply to, who you're not going to reply to. When you're going to be quiet, hold a sign and say nothing, and when you're going to speak up. It's, it's a very fine-tuned thing. It doesn't, I mean, it takes a lot of prayer, fasting, to make sure you're prepared for these things. And so we, we, we've been here since 11 o'clock today. What's the ground of your assurance? The ground of my assurance? Sacrifice of Christ. I abide in Him. I'm saved. If I abide in Him, I will, I, I'm going to be safe today. Please yeah. make that evident and obvious in your preaching. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I mean, it's, it's I don't, I don't think Clint, I'm going to satisfy you. Okay. I mean, because I'm going to. I'm, I'm trying to be. A I understand. I'm just going to be saying that your pleadings with me come from a Calvinistic perspective. And I'm simply saying to you, I'm willing to call you brother. I'm not calling you not, not a brother. I'm not saying you're not my brother. I'm not, I'm not saying Calvinists are going to hell. I'm not saying that. You understand? Okay. But somebody, somebody, I'm not saying that, so I'm not sure I understand that. I'm not, I'm not like anti-Calvinist, I'm anti-Calvinism. Okay, so, I, and, and if I said that, that all Calvinists would have to say it by myself at one point I was going to hell. When I was, I know I was right with God, even when I was a partial Calvinist. Okay, so, I don't think that what I say and do here is going to satisfy you. Because your perspective of the sinners are born that way, they can't help it. That they're, that they're, I, know I'm not, I'm not saying you don't, I'm saying you don't, I'm just saying that I don't think they're born that way. I think they have a choice to be a sinner or not. And I'm calling to repentance and faith in Christ. And you made that choice, and then you repent later in life. That's right. When I was 19 years old, I repent. I like your shirt. Huh? It's nice. I could sin. I'm not sinning now. I'm not, I'm not sinning this action. Do you okay, so, so when, it, when it comes to these things, is, is, there's always like this route we go down. So I'm going to just make it as clear as I possibly can. Okay? I've sinned thousands of times in the past. I've sinned since becoming a Christian to my own shame. Yeah. Every time I've sinned, whether before a Christian or after, I didn't have to. It's right. all my fault. That's right. I'm completely accountable for it. Okay? <laughs> But since becoming a Christian, in the last 24, almost 25 years now, sin has been the exception of my life, not the rule. Okay? I'm not sinning now. I have no plans to ever sin again. But I don't know the future. I could sin again because I have free will. I'm tempted. Daily. That's right. No, I'm tempted all the time. Okay? So I have a choice to sin now. Every temptation that comes into my life, I have a choice to live righteously in that moment. I have a choice I can give in to, sin, give in to temptation to sin. But no one forces me either way. And if I'm in Christ, if I'm abiding in Him, I will not sin according to First John three. This has never been God. Okay. And First John two, three to four says, "Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments." He who says, "I know Him," and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not Him. So I believe in holiness. But there's no way to really pin me down. I'm not Pentecostal. But I do believe in the gifts. I don't speak in tongues out loud randomly in a church crowd. But I believe in the gifts. Done. It's done according to First Corinthians fourteen. So I believe in holiness. I was a Baptist pastor. So I'm not a pastor. Like now I'm just a non-denominational pastor. Been that way for quite some time. So when it comes to a Christian, it should be holiness, obedience. It should not be daily sinning and daily defeat. Be victory overcoming sin. And we can, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's it in a nutshell. You might not agree with all. You probably don't agree with a lot of that, but that's the fact. But I believe. It's so all it's clear to you. You obviously know how I respond to you. Yes, I do know how you respond to it. I'm just trying to make it clear to you what I believe so you understand. That's it. Okay, well, it's, it's helpful. I know where you guys are coming from as a minister in this area. <laughs> My first time here, I'll probably make it a Daniel show. Yeah. Once a year. Uh, 
I'll give you my gospel track. You can see my website at the back. You want to email me for that? I bet. One more time, you're Harrigan. Harrigan. Yes. Adam. Adam. Yes. All right, Clay, good to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Is there a follow-up in there? There's two. Website, right there. Okay, sounds good, Clay. How much do you guys get paid an hour? I get paid nothing. I pay to come here. We pay to come here. Because I care about people. I care about God's word. Because I mean, very obvious. But listen, if, if you, the way dialogue works, if you ask a question, you wait for the an answer, then you can respond. Okay, so you ask me, you ask me why I do. I'm giving you the answer. You can just read it and say, I don't care what you want. Uh, that is a choice. I'm telling you, I do care. That is a choice. So you believe that people were born that way? Like it's in the DNA? Not in the DNA, but so as in I was born straight. Well, they were doing it. Well, you were born. So, like the color of your skin, right? Eyes, hair, height, that's all predetermined in the DNA. So, when you want to say you were born away, that's what we're talking about, the material realm. I never made the choice to be straight. So, I grew older, I realized I was straight. If you want to talk about the choice, your body testifies that you're created to be straight because you have bodies, complete body systems, respiratory, pulmonary, nervous system, lymph node system, whatever, uh, lymphatic system. You only have, you have complete systems except for reproductive system. The woman has the other half of the reproductive system. So God obviously designed your body and her body to come together to reproduce. Okay, so nature itself shows you that you were created to be straight. Okay, you didn't, you, you weren't, you weren't born, and there's nothing in the DNA. They did a genome study on this that shows that you're born homosexual. Now, I will say this: there are some. I had a brother in Christ. He was, he was abused by a man, you know, a babysitter, and he fought against homosexuality his whole life. You know, so I do believe that there's influences that happen to children that will affect their soul and they're, and they're more susceptible to that, but it's still a free will choice that you went to it. He didn't go to it, he fought against it, but his answer to fight against it before he knew Christ was to have sex with as many women as he could to prove that he wasn't gay. But all that ended when he came to Jesus, right? So when he came to Jesus, he found out, oh, this is why I felt like this. It wasn't because I was born like this. It's because I was, I was traumatized by something, right? But it was still a choice he made. So. It's just a choice. You, you recognize all the persecution and discrimination that homosexual people uh, that they have experienced in the past. Well, I mean, I'm not for persecuting homosexuals at all. Yeah. Yes, but not as much as like Christians or African Americans or Jews or something like that. They've faced more persecution historically than homosexuals. There's no contesting. It's it's fact. <laughs> Would it not be in their best interest to choose to still be straight rather than be gay? Here's the, here's the difference, bro. You're born Jewish. You're born African American. You know you choose to be a Christian, of course, but a homosexual chooses to be a homosexual. I'm saying, but what, what incentive would they have if they know that they will face certain persecution and discrimination? What incentive well, would they you have? You think in America homosexuals are persecuted right now? At this moment, in certain places, yes. No. In certain places in no. America, yes. No. They're celebrated. They're celebrated, yes. In, in all parts of America. You know, uh, well, the majority of America, I don't know about little pockets of rural America, but I haven't heard of a homosexual being killed recently, have you? Or persecuted? Yeah, but that wasn't because of homosexuality. That was because of a madman doing stupid things. But he did it under, under Jesus Christ's name. So what does that mean? So I'm Just because he, he did it in Jesus' name means it was from God? No, I'm saying that A lot he, of people did he, things he in Jesus', Jesus name. As his justification. So he what, bro? You know what Jesus said? He said, "Ye shall know them by their fruit." So just because somebody says, I love Jesus, I'm a Christian, there were slave masters that put Africans in slavery in the name of Jesus. And you know what they did? They took out all the freedom scriptures in the Bible and gave it to the slaves. Like, read this Bible. 
you know, submit to your master. You see, I'm the master. Submit. It says it in the Bible, right? And then it doesn't. And then they took out all the freedom scriptures, right? So just because someone says they believe in Jesus, they're a Christian, doesn't mean they are. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Usually, those that commit the acts of persecution against this community are persons that self-identify as Christian. That's that's dude. And yes, it's there. It's but they're not Christian. Yeah. According to the doctrine, so if you want to find out what a true believer is, you got to read the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm saying is the people that commit these acts self-identify as Christian. That's okay. So what does that mean, though? All I'm saying is, why would they choose to be a part of this group that they know that there are people that will commit these acts to? Them? There is no incentive. The persecution against homosexuality is not at homosexuals is not at a level where they're like scared to not come out. It's not at a level. I mean, you can go down the street right now, and you're not going to be murdered for being homosexual. Right. So, 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 so for people, no, you could no, no. I'm saying no. Is this different today than it was, say, 20, 30 years ago? That's just fear. I mean, there's no examples of it. So, bro, listen. There are some things that have happened to homosexuals in the past, but it's not on such a scale where people would be afraid to come out. The, only, the reason why people were afraid to come out is because of the social pressure, you know, against them. Like, I don't want to look bad to people, not because they were threatened with murder. But Christians are threatened with murder today in the world more than any other faith right now. In Islamic nations, in I can... See, these are, these are Americans. They they've never been out of this country, probably. They they've never looked. They've never looked. Of course, I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Africa. I've lived in Africa. Okay, so 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 people that believe in Jesus are the most persecuted faith right now in Amer in the world, based on the numbers. Okay, America, America, people aren't getting killed for being Christian. No, of course not. But. We do face, I've been knocked out for preaching the gospel before. I've, I've had pee thrown on me. I've had, I've been spit on. I've had other things thrown on me. Most of it in the homosexual community, honestly. I've experienced the most hate from homosexuals in any other community. Okay, have you experienced that hate because you're Christian? Or have you experienced that hate because you're telling these people that who they are is wrong? That's, Jesus defines what a marriage is. And, he, and Paul writes that homosexuality is a sin. So if I don't tell them that and, and tell them to come to Jesus, then I hate them. See, the problem is people don't know what love is. They think love is acceptance and tolerance and this and that. But the Bible defines what love is, right? And, and, if, and if, a, if homosexuality is a sin and there's two homosexuals that are committing sinful acts, they don't love each other, they hate each other because what they're doing is going to take each other to hell. If it's true, right? That's not love, bro. Love would be somebody telling them the truth, right? I would disagree. Well, you disagree with the Word of God then, bro. All right, to go, to go back to your earlier point, you said, you talked about marriage. Okay. All right, there is the Christian definition of marriage. Jesus' definition of marriage. Jesus' definition of marriage. And there is the governmental institution of marriage. Okay. So you can be, like say, I can go and marry a woman, but if I never go to the courthouse, it's not right for the government. Sure. So do you believe it's right for the government to impose Jesus' Uh, definition of Christianity on all people. Well, Jesus wasn't a politician other than his father's kingdom. And so in his father's kingdom, he's saying a man, it, it, God created male and female, and for this cause the two shall be one flesh, male and female. That's God's divine covenant. What the governments of the world do is irrelevant to that, bro. It's irrelevant to that. Okay, so if two homosexuals get by, do, so do you think it's okay for the Freedom of Marriage Act to be enforced? Bro, I'm not a politician. That's that's the governments of the world. So what's what's right what's right to them isn't always right to God. But I'm not going to go on the Capitol steps and fight against even with the abortion problem, right? I don't go into politics to try to end abortion. I go to abortion clinics and I preach the gospel, and I try to get I try to get women to turn to Jesus and not kill their baby. And we've had. Yeah. Okay. So I don't get into politics, man. I'm not a political supporter. You know, a lot of people stereotype me because I'm a white Christian that I'm a Trump supporter and a Republican conservative. But that's not the case. I don't support. I don't support him. So.
So, in cases of rape and incest, would you still believe that that woman, or even even that child, should have to carry that that baby into the world? What did the baby do? Not so much as the baby, but the well, was the baby innocent? So why would you kill the baby for the father's crimes? I can't judge. Uh, I can't judge. But therefore, but here's who the said thing. I support Trump? Thank you. Be quiet and listen to him. No. You see what they do to my words? No, I'm not talking to you. Go ahead. I do believe in a right to a woman's autonomy. Do what? I do believe in a right to a woman's autonomy. Therefore, I can impose my view on So, Okay, does a woman have a right to take another person's life? To a t in what sense? Like, is that her body inside of her? It is her body. Oh, no, no, no. You must, you must not have a wife, right? I, my wife's been pregnant like five, six times, okay? And that baby in there is not her body. It's not her body. But that's not her body. But her body is being used. It's irrelevant. It's not her body. If something happens to that baby, it will affect her, right? It's not her body. If something happens to that baby inside her, it affects her. But it's not her body, correct? It literally comes from her. That baby is a part of her. It's a simple biological question. It is. Is, is, it, is it her body? So the baby is the woman's body. While it's inside of her, it is a part of her. So yes, hey, he said that while the baby's inside the woman, that's her body as well. Have you ever been to a biology class, bro? Like seriously. It has a separate heart, a separate brain. It has its separate feet and toes and legs. It's not her body. But it's inside of her. It is, it is, okay. It is hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It is not her body. Regardless if, if that baby is relying on the mother, because when the baby's born, it's just as reliant upon the mother as it was in the womb. Just as reliant. Yes, it, if you set a one-month-old baby on your doorstep and don't feed it, it's going to die. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what I'm, your argument falls apart. You don't even see it. You, it's not her body. It's basic biology. You guys are in college? You don't know that? You know what? What are they teaching y'all here, man? What are y'all teaching? What are y'all learning here, man? Goodness. Okay. About three, four years. Sounds good. Go ahead. I'm saying that baby is physically inside of the mother, right? Yes. So Wally, but it's not her body. So Wally, hold on. While Wally is inside the body, who does, who does it depend on? I'm not listening to you because you're being ignorant. So go ahead. And she's ignorant too. While it's inside the mother's body, yeah. can it survive outside of that body at that stage? That what? I can't hear, I can't hear because she's screaming like a demon, man. If I were to take, I'll say, a 26 week old baby, take it out of the body, will it survive? Yes, it can. Ah. Okay, babies that, that are as early as 24 weeks have survived now because of because of sustaining them medically. Yeah, but they also need outside help outside the mother, right? Yeah, but what I, what I, what I, my point to you was this: the baby's body, the baby's body is a different body. Agree? So the baby is the same as the, that's the mother's body. It is literally inside of her. Stop, stop. You're not listening. Logic, logic. Have you ever taken a logic class? You're not giving me how it's separate. Okay. You have baby and you have mom. No. I can't even talk to you anymore. You gotta, you gotta read a book, man. You gotta read a book.
Like killing a baby is partly yours. Even though it's forced upon you, it's still partly your baby. Like killing me is not like solving most of the time. I understand. No, they can't care. And they couldn't care because they're not working. There might be difficulty. There might be difficulty. At the same time, you don't kill a child for the same time. Is it right for you to be perfect? Excuse me, your body belongs to the Of course not. But that's not what I'm saying. I don't care if they kill the reason. But listen, at least give it up for a doctor. They're not being. No doctor can say that. No doctor can say that legitimately that it's true. I mean, I, I've had doctors tell me that my child's going to be born straight away, to have a problem. He was wrong every single time he was wrong. I was another future man. And, and, and listen, if there was a, a potentiality of them being, they're in physical trauma, they're, they're in danger, they do a C-section. Because an abortion takes time. They put something in the woman at first to open up her cervix. I think a couple of days, <laughs> then they go back a couple of days later and they have an abortion. Okay? But if, if it's an emergency, you do a C-section to remove the child. So if there really is a legitimate emergency where the woman's life's in danger, she has all kinds of stress, her blood pressure's going crazy, they do a C-section to remove the child to protect her. And sometimes the baby, if it's open, also survives that emergency. Excuse me. In that situation, nobody gets killed. That's the same. They go survive. Well, my personality? What I do wrong? It's okay, bro. It's okay. I'm sad now. Sad face. I'm glad he could help you. What's that? Yeah. If you're not going to be ignorant. Okay, cool. Yeah, c come over here. Yeah. What's up? So I heard I'm going to get into it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I just I don't think it's going to be right for a woman. I'm not proposing to you. I just need to get down. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm above you. I'm Adam, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. You think it's right for a young woman to bring a baby into this world and she can't take care of her? Well, there's an abortion. I mean, a adoption. The adoption community. Matter of fact, we actually we actually point people to an organization that we know. It's a Christian organization. They even have a program where the uh, the mother can be in the life of the adopted child while they're being raised. So that's all. That's always an option. Um, and in my in my in my uh, experience, God always makes a way for life, right? So, and it, and it's murder. It's straight up murder. It really is because it's a it's a living child. According to the Bible, according to biology, life starts at conception when that cell splits. It's only it's only people's emotional political responses that they disagree with that. But science science has proven that 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 life is there. The heartbeat starts within what 21 days, maybe a little bit after that and you know some people don't even know they're pregnant till after that so but yeah i mean there, there's no good argument to kill a baby in the mother's womb not one I don't think you personally Well, you can give it to somebody that'll take care of it. And, and look, look, a lot of the, a lot of the, like when we're at the abortion clinic, I see a lot of Mercedes Benzes, I see a lot of new Toyotas, I see a lot of nice cars rolling up in there. And so I'm like, do you all really not have enough money to take care of this baby? Really? Because some people might, some people might not. But is that is that an excuse? You got a bug in your hair. You got a bug in your hair. Okay. So you know, don't have sex. You know, and then if you do have sex and you get pregnant, find somebody to take care of that baby. Adoption process. Look, I can't take care of this baby. I don't want to kill it. I, there's a there's a YouTube channel on babies that have survived abortion attempts and and stuff like my mom, my uh, my wife too. She's a testimony. But anyway, um, they talk about their life and how good it was, you know, 
um, that their parents gave them up for adoption instead of killed them. And there's a channel for children of rape as well. And these are beautiful people. And, and that person would have never had an impact on society if the woman who got raped would have killed the baby. So you just never know. You're not supposed to take that, that power into your hands because that's a life. That God, you know, regardless of how that baby came into being, it's an innocent child. So, so, I hope that helps. Yeah. 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 Thanks for talking. Yeah. What's up? So, what did you mean by like? Meaning, okay, so when a woman is pregnant, is that baby the woman's body, biologically speaking, or is it a different body? Thank you. That's all I was saying. He was trying to say that it's the same body. I'm like, that's not even. Listen, listen, listen. I think you need a counselor or something. Because you, you, you have been. No, no, I'm, I'm talking to her. I'm talking to her. I'm talking to her. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Hold on one second. Sorry. What riot? I didn't see a riot. Why are you Why are you saying people are rioting? Are these the type of people that were riot? Is that it? That's a riot. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You just said that people were rioting. Yeah, earlier. I'll let them deal with you on that one. What, what was your question? I'm done with you. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm done with you. I'm not talking to you. That's not a conversation. That's somebody screaming in my ear. You brought it up. She's trying to talk. Did you get Did you get it out? Are you done? Are you done? I'm trying to talk to her. Look at him. Look at him. You guys are triggered, man. You guys are triggered. Go chill. All right. What was your question? Okay, I'm going to talk to her now, okay? Just try to talk. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Body is yeah. Yeah. So what I was saying to him is that baby's body is not the woman's body. It's a separate body. So when a woman says my body, my choice, yeah, I believe in that. It's your choice to do what you want to do with your body, but it's not your choice to do what you want to do with that other body. It's, 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 I got four children. I've seen my wife through a lot of trials, so I know, believe me. So, so anyway, a woman doesn't have a right to take the life of another body inside of her. And if you if you want to avoid that, just don't have sex. I mean, it's that simple. That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. Yeah, you want to go? I'm getting hungry. Okay. We're leaving, guys. Take care. I am the lost one, weak and condemned The one that God wants you to talk to But you're scared you to offend And I am the outcast, rejected inside Who oh, I'm looking for answers But I'm blinded by pride So come out and preach Preach unto me and tell me the secret to eternity. Be bold and speak and reach 
reach out to me No, I can't save myself But I want to be free And there's something inside you I need Oh, there's something deep down inside you I need